Good morning and welcome to the last week of the year. I'm Tom Connors. With me, as always, is the boss man, Andre. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing the best I can outside of the fact that you have me, like, doing 10 things at once. But we, we, we're not going to get into all that right now. Yeah, no, but, actually, uh, to, to, be, uh, to be fair, it's only it's not 10 things. It's just three videos that's three waiting to be done right now. Only waiting for you, my friend. So, yeah. Plus this uh, show. And but... uh, Rambam3000 says, only 18 minutes late. Yeah, well, now you know why. Yeah, and we also have with us, joining at the very last second, and thank you for being here, Mr. Script Doctor himself. Uh, hello. Yes. Thanks so much for inviting me. It's great to talk with you guys after the hol- after the main Christmas holiday. <laughs> yeah, inviting you. It's it's funny. You act like like we have to invite you. You just we just give you the thing. You're meant to, expected to be here. We cry when you're not. Yeah, we do cry when you're not here. This is actually true. Yeah. Afterwards, <laughs> we have a little session. Yeah. We, we may we may not cry on there, but we have like a good cry afterwards. We need like a good hug. Script wasn't here. What's wrong? It's the only time Andre shows emotion. Outside of those oh one God, or two times he got so angry. <laughs> Considering how dead he is inside, that means a lot. Yeah, yeah. It does, yeah. That that it's, it hits me right in the feels. Thank you. Thank you so but much. Speaking <laughs> of dead, uh, Matrix died a horrible death at the box office this weekend. It was, you know, resurrection, it was not. Uh, but we're going to get into that and so much more. But good morning, kids. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful holiday. Let's say hello to some of the chat here. We got some of the regulars hopping in here. We got... Dragon Master 360s. I saw six in here earlier. I saw Stephanie Janice second here. Naked Fame is here. Jace Fox is here. We've got Judicon here. Silver Nova. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Matthew O'Hara. Lady Lion Tooth. Oh, I think that's a newer name. Uh, Ram Bam 3000. Uh, D Bud Martin is here. Welcome, welcome. Xenomorph, DS Ford, and Dr. Dong, Long Dongler, all members of the channel. Thank you so very much. I saw Brightest Day in here as well. How you doing? Olaf Van S is here, speaking of members. Uh, Paulus Plain is here as well. And uh, yeah, so many more. Thank you for being here. Bashy Washy's here as well. Dead Pirate Mike, uh, as opposed to a live Pirate Mike. And Alex, Alex Ashgan is here as well. And Girthy Guitarist. Hey, ain't seen you in a little while. How you doing? Oh, we got 70s Rock Fan in the chat. How you doing, buddy? Uh, we yeah. also got Hyperdiver 2 yeah. for $5. Hope everyone had a great holiday. Santa, sadly, Santa didn't visit the house this year. Instead, we got a visit from Krampus. Oh, no. We threw him a pillow party. I like that. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, if life throws you lemons, make lemonade. That's or throw a, a pillow party. Or a pillow party. That's a, so we got Vigilante that's Williamson in the house. How you doing, my friend? Speaking of Dr. Longdongler, he sent us a uh, super sticker. Yeah, Thank you so very so much, much for that. that. That is much appreciated. I think we had another uh, super chat before that, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we Mike did. Miller. So I'm going to get to that right now. Yeah. We had. See, whoops. Oops. Go ahead and do that one first. Yeah, this is the first one. Uh, Shotgun Fringe said for $4.99, I skipped the Matrix to go see the Kingsman last week. It seems like a lot of media is ignoring this film. My wife and I thought it was pretty good. And yeah, I think you're right. It is. It does seem pretty ignored and overlooked. Yeah, I mean, the first two did okay. Um, we're going to talk about the box office here in a little bit. Uh, Lord Trinance brings up uh, new, No Way Home. Says, uh, going to see No Way Home this week. Watched uh, Far From Home for the first time to prepare, prepare. Damn, that movie sucked. Looking forward to new No Way Home to cleanse my mind. Yeah, I, I didn't think it sucked, but I didn't think it was nearly I as good as Homecoming. I didn't like the ending. My my problem was the ending. Uh, yeah, I, I as soon as, as, soon as like uh, No Way Home. Like, I didn't mind it up until... No, sorry, right. sorry. Uh, far from home. Far from home. Yeah. It's so confusing with the home and the title. Far from like, home. I was I fine know. with it until uh, M- Mysterio starts hamming it up. And then the whole, like, switcheroo thing with uh, Samuel Jackson and stuff. That's the shit that pissed me off. Like, that took me out of the whole experience. Like, at that point, I'm just like, okay, this is dumb. I mean, other than that, I was okay with it. I, lo- I thought the little story between him and MJ was cute and all that kind of stuff. And getting to see him do uh, the spider monkey stuff was cool or whatever the hell he called himself. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than that, yeah, it's not one of the better films, that's for sure. And then when I saw one from Michael Miller here. Uh, yeah. says CBS gets sued tomorrow, F the Matrix. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, there's some yeah, interesting things going on over like there. The I know that. that uh, Viacom CBS is a company that is... Um, 
extremely mismanaged and it has so many people in its ranks that do not care for the shareholders it do not care for anything of that nature it is it's only a bunch of sjw's in many many levels ruining the company and you can kind of tell that from the decisions that are being made and the share price so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that we will follow it up in due course right now though we have a million other things that also require our fairly immediate attention behind the scenes. We have some big videos that we're working on and stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll get into the uh, into the Viacom CBS. Well, there's been an interesting thing. It's up. You know, uh, it was funny. Uh, another one of our things we reported happened. As we were saying, they were going to split up season one. Guess what they announced the other day? Or not season one, but this new season into two seasons pretty much they're splitting it up like we said and their excuses get, for, get are we talking Andre. about star trek discovery discovery now? yes sorry exactly as predicted and guess what their excuse Hashtag is midnight search was right Again. instead of it actually being the original initial idea which would be so they could actually hold it off so they could actually get paramount plus and other markets it's so they can actually let prodigy be more upfront. is their excuse they want to give prodigy more attention because Prodigy, I I think I only saw two episodes of Prodigy, and it is it Prodigy it or deserve... Prodigy? Prodigy, I don't give a fuck. Whatever it's called, nobody gives a shit. It's it's a bad show. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Like that was the only one that had any monochrome of hope attached to it. That like, man, yeah, maybe, just maybe. <clears throat> yeah, because that I've might heard. actually escape uh, unharmed. Not from what I've heard. <laughs> no, but I mean, like in theory, in theory, like for yeah, instance, right, right. if you go, if you go and look at He Man, yeah. Now I know Tom that uh, the children's 3D animated series that's not for you. It's not for me. But apparently, according to everyone I know that sat down to see it, it ain't half bad, and that could very well be because no one that has an agenda bothered to look into it. I'm sorry, but Lady Ram Man, I can't do it. Just can't. No. Not in, when everybody's special, nobody's special. I'm just going to say it. It's true. Uh, anyway, Deleted Scenes is here as well. He says, Hail, Andre, Script, Tom, Mods, and Chat. Thank you so much for being here, Stephen. We appreciate that. We also have Vigilante Williamson who says, Santa Satan. Well, you're not wrong. They do have the same letters. Uh, you know what I did yesterday, Andre? I showed my folks, no, but I'm but I'm nervous to ask. About no, actually, right I showed now. my folks Fat Man. Oh, okay, yeah. That I, 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 the funny thing is, I knew my mom was going to love it, but my dad yeah. was just like, "I don't want to watch that." <laughs> like, no, trust me, it's good. After the movie, he was the first one to go. That was pretty good. It was better than I thought it was going to be. A little bloody, but it was good. No, yeah, not bad. He's uh, not a yeah, big no. fan of gore and stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, He's seen enough cool. real life stuff in Vietnam. He don't. Oh yeah, oh well, yeah. Of course, that's going to cure you a bit. So yeah, like yeah, I was surprised he uh, he enjoyed it, but uh, that was fun. Just doing a little home family kind of Christmas thing. Uh, and then Spider Unlimited says Spider Man awesome. Matrix sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it and, seems and, to be a common opinion. Yeah. And then Kitty Bear, the Dutch bastard, is here, and he sends us a super sticker as well. Thank you for that, Kitty Bear. We appreciate that. Dr. Long Gondongler, before send us a thumbs up, let's see what Kitty Bear sent us. He sent us a thumbs up as well. Thank you so much for that. And we also have Mike in the chat. I think you have the link, Mike, if you're not busy. But he says, uh, hail, brothers. Andre Tom Script saw Spider-Man for the second time in 3DX and 4DX theater. Holy hell, wow. Have you guys been in one of these before? I recommend the experience to everyone. No, you know I haven't. I'd, been settle talking for, about I'd, I'd settle for seeing Spider-Man No Way Home. I was waiting for that. Other than a cam rip. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm, you're, you're going to really get Andre upset here. Uh, no, I've never been to a 40X. Have you, Script? Um, I've been to one like at an amusement park, but not in a proper theater. No. Probably a similar. Oh, I think they're, it's identical technology. It's just synced up yeah. to whatever movie you're you're watching. So yeah, and it also depends on like the budget level. If you have like 
proper like things that like blow steam in your face or yeah. if you have one of the cinema employees running around the water pistol squirting at you <laughs> that was done in the 70s <laughs> this is 40 or here scratch and sniff this at 141 <laughs> no he showed us a few images of it looks pretty neat um i'd love to go to see one i don't even know if there's any around here um but thank you for for the super chat mike you didn't have to do that of course um but yeah if you got the uh if you got the time come on in you got the link you're always welcome so yeah. of course he is uh dash attack says ram ma'am is rat catcher too the helmet <laughs> she wears belongs to her dead father okay well still <sighs> yeah but what without the original story what point does ram ma'am hat ran man have anyway then the legacy isn't really there I get it. People want to like this and they want some He-Man to like. It's just, to me, it's not He-Man. It's Power Rangers. Um, Mr. Buttcrack Media sends in a super sticker. Thank you so and much. And also a thumbs up, yeah. And another thumbs up. Well, hopefully you guys are actually hitting the thumbs up. We appreciate that if you do. Help show the algorithm that you like what we're doing. And if you don't like what you're doing, hit the dislike. But we can't see it no more. So, haha, on you, I guess. Uh, <laughs> they're protecting us, Andre. Yeah, well, well, much appreciated. And also, speaking of protection... John Apocalypse uh, says, seeing budget of Matrix 4, my only question is why. I actually have the answer to that. You see, Viacom CBS ain't the only mismanaged company. <laughs> that is true. The only difference is Warner Brothers has money. Yeah, they have money to waste. And that's when you see like the really poor decisions, which, which makes uh viacom cbs even more excusable because yeah. they don't have the money to burn well they got at&t money to burn yeah mm -hmm. yeah by warner does yeah all right and then moving on we've got uh, i think that's the uh super chats for this morning unless there was any before the show we missed andre yeah, no, that's all of them. I went back to the very beginning. Uh, so with that, uh, let us get into the first main story of today. Yeah, uh, the first main story is the box office. Uh, Matrix, sadly, uh, or for well, at least for Warner Brothers and Lana Wachowski and, and the crew, didn't manage to do a whole lot. Uh, but Spider-Man did. Uh, the box office did very well over the weekend. Uh, according to uh, Variety here, despite the best efforts of Spider-Man, Black Widow, or other Mighty Avenger movie theaters have yet to rebound another topsy-turvy pandemic-battered year. Well, they're going off the year, but considering, uh, I don't think this was the story I wanted to bring up, but I just wanted the main box office numbers here. Christ. Uh, <laughs> this is of the year. I just wanted the weekend. Crying on Atlee. Ugh. When you just well, want something I can for give one spoiler, though. In the past couple of days... Spider-Man crossed one billion at the worldwide box office. Yeah, as predicted by Valiant Renegade. Say, that day, is yeah. a pretty impressive feat. Yeah, in, in like what a week, basically. Yeah, just yeah. over technically. Okay, now we got the domestic box office. All right, looks like Spider-Man: No Way Home managed to bring in eighty-one million over the weekend, uh, and that does not include its huge Christmas week which is included here in the total gross, which brings it up to $467 million in the U.S. alone. As you pointed out, it's made a billion dollars overall. Sing 2 came in, unsurprisingly, in second place, but with a nice $23 million take, which isn't bad at all. Matrix, See, I told you, yeah, never yeah. underestimate good counter-programming. Oh, yeah, I, I wasn't going to. I wasn't surprised when you, when you made that prediction. I, I figured this was going to do okay, because um, all those people who already saw Spider-Man took their kids to... To sing too. Uh, Matrix Resurrections didn't manage to res resurrect the box office much for Warner Brothers by bringing in a measly 12 million, and I highly doubt it did much better for them on um, HBO Max. Uh, the Kingsman, sadly as well, did not uh, bring in much at the box office, under 7 million for the weekend. Not too, not too good for that. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, the other one, though, American Underdog now. This may look like a low amount here, but see, this movie was on a lot less screens, and it's a much lower budgeted film. This is the one we were talking about last week. That's uh, about with Kurt Warner, I think it is, uh, the uh, football player. So that's probably pretty well for that movie. And then West Side Story continues to flop. So there's pretty much the top five point six 
films of the week. And Kanto, which is also already on Disney Plus, managed to bring in $2 million, which I was surprised. Uh, but by the way, for those who don't know, that is on Disney Plus now. So yeah, so overall, uh, nostalgia versus nostalgia at the box office, it appears. But uh, only one franchise managed to do it right, it looks like, right? Kind of. That's certainly what the numbers tell us, that uh, that Spider-Man No Way Home did everything, and I mean everything right. Because who would have predicted that we would be seeing a billion-dollar movie right now, this early? Certainly not I. If you had told me, like, one month ago, that this movie was going to do a billion, I honestly wouldn't have believed it. I would have been thinking, like, whoa, Disney surely went all in on fortifying the box office for this one. But, no, it really, really did that. Like, everyone is going completely nuts about seeing this movie. Everyone apart from Norwegians, because we don't have the opportunity. Yeah, we don't even have the opportunity right now in, in certain parts of Canada either, unfortunately. But I know, it's still doing quite well, uh, despite that, which is great, uh, yeah, financially. Um, but again, at, at the same time, we have to hope that, uh, I mean, again, a lot of people are, in, in the industry are going to take the wrong lesson from this. Uh, that <laughs> is my that is my word. That's what I've been talking about all weekend, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because you would think, you would think that the, that. I mean, this movie, it has to raise eyebrows. Like, everyone in the industry has to pay attention to these kind of numbers. But then what do you do with these numbers? Do you take the right lesson, which is if you treat the source material with respect, and you give them a crowd pleaser, and you actually add to the foundations rather than deconstruct and tear them down, you may just have a winner on your hands. Or is there going to be some way to try to rationalize these numbers to protect the narrative? That's what I'm going to already. Yeah. I was just going to say, that's the biggest thing here we got is this whole thing is uh, busted two or three narratives already, and they're scrambling to try and fix that. Or Well, they're going to look at this as brand first, because that's what basically they're banking up before No Way Home came out, is that the Marvel brand can, can survive anything. and. We saw three films that proved that wrong. So now they're going to exactly. switch it over and say the Spider-Man brand can just survive anything. In which case, are they going to start working Spider-Man, whether it be Toby, Andrew, or uh, Tom Holland, into any future installments to try and get that billion-dollar box office again? Like A that's going to be, the, yes. easiest, that's gonna be yeah. the easiest plan that some execs are going to go for. The hardest yeah. one is: can we really tell a great, entertaining story that has, you know? Um, role models because that's the one thing that we've been missing for the last 20 years in our film is like role models people that they want to be like and that they want their kids to grow up to be like we don't have that uh, as frequently in the big budget tentpole heavily advertised films anymore this uh, is the first and, time i've seen it in ages now that you mentioned it. yeah it is isn't it <laughs> like the last time you saw it was about spider-man 2 <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much I'm not saying that's a good thing but uh that's where we are. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, we could get into the whole Scotty Mendelson thing, which Andre has a video coming out, so I don't want to get too deep into it. But Lord Almighty. Well, let's let's do it. Let's do it anyway, because uh, about because yeah, we have an editorial about it. But but Scotty Mendelson, he has many many bad takes, but this is the worst one. And so this should we start calling him Scotty Menstruation then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure he must have been called worse in his time. But well, anyway, this this has to do. If with you like the King of Bad Takes, Andre, that is my uh, that's my alternate title for that one chapter so far outside of WTF, Scott. <laughs> like that's your choices <laughs> right now. <laughs> Menstruation and double WTF. No, 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 no. The King of Bad Takes, or what the fuck, Scott. Because you didn't like the one you had there, so like I know we're talking inside baseball right now, but yeah. I, I think I think we're gonna go with the first one of those, like the, the WTF Scott. Okay, that's what I got in there right now. So uh, I went with my instinct. <laughs> perfect. Your instincts were on par. So yeah, Scotty come out, and uh, he wrote wrote a story, and of course he had to to add some notes to it. And one of the the most glaring one was this one here, uh, as you see on screen. I don't know if you want to take it over from here, Andre. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, this goes to what we were just saying about Hollywood taking the wrong lessons, because there should be only one or two messages to take away 
from Spider-Man, first and foremost, treat the source material with respect, give the audience something to aspire to, and they will go out in drops to see it. That should be the takeaway. But of course, you have the people who are all into deconstructing and subverting not just properties, but culture and society at large. And they can't accept a lesson like that. They have to find some way to rationalize it. And so here is what Scott Mendelssohn was able to read out of and get out of Spider-Man crossing a billion at the box office. Two things he was able to glean from that. One is that Shang-Chi did amazing, dropping only 54% in a second weekend. So, so Spider-Man's success uh, is a testament to the real success of Shang-Chi. That's one. The other... Uh, is that the success of Spider-Man demonstrates that <clears throat> that uh, people really love Star Wars The Last Jedi, that the discourse fuck? about how people hate it is just fabricated because this box office proves it. You know what this is like? This is like somebody going, some people liked pizza, so that means that burgers were not as big last year as chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, really about how relevant of shit that he's saying here, because you're you're not even comparing apples to oranges here. You're comparing like sharks to fucking umbrellas. Like that's really what it feels like at this point. Yeah, I, it reminds me. It reminds me of um, uh, of uh, some level of argumentation that is in an old Norwegian. Of course, Danes are going to insist that it's Danes. Danish, but, but still we're going to go with Norwegian because that's where Ludwig Holberg was born. And he wrote a play. It's actually a really good play. It's called Erasmus Montanus. And it's about a Norwegian who comes from dumpster Hicksville, nowhere, Norway in the 17th century. And like everyone from, from Hicksville, Norway, that wants to be something in the 17th century, he has to leg off to Denmark. To Copenhagen to go to university and he does and he comes back quite arrogant uh, and then he has to when he comes back home again he has to measure wits with the other person who also went to Denmark uh, and learned Latin and stuff like that and this guy he also likes to likes to uh, show off his skills and everything how smart he is so he uses logic to convince a woman that she's a rock he uses like the argumentation that uh, uh, that uh, uh, if you if you throw a rock into water, it'll sink. If one throws you into water, you will also sink. Therefore, you are a rock. So and it's she, the Monty Python witch argument, kind of. And uh, and she falls down crying and believes him, and he has to come up with some other argumentation. I mean, this is this kind of argumentation. So it's like just how gaslighting, but it's like older than that even this is yeah yeah this i mean come on this is gaslighting i mean th this were it not so incredibly pathetic this would be gaslighting because what scott scotty is really saying here is that uh in its second weekend what happened was that spider-man had a massive massive first weekend and because it was so massive first weekend it had something of a drop in the second week. Well, and he's not even bringing in the factor that we had an entire holiday week in between, too. Where, yeah, like, or or that there's a new variant that sounds like a transformer that everyone in the media is freaking people out about. That might also keep some people away yeah. from from returning after they've seen it the first time. But no, oh yeah, I like it, love it. It's in the video. <laughs> I'm very glad it's to in hear the movie. it. Yeah, it's definitely in the movie. <laughs> but like... so, yeah, he ignores all of that, and he does. So basically, everything it all rests upon is that uh, it uh, that uh, from we weekend one to weekend two, Spider Man No Way Home fell sixty eight percent, still cost a billion. It still earned more in its second weekend than Shang Chi did in its first. But because it percentage wise had a bigger drop than Shang Chi, that means that. Shang-Chi was a triumph. And yeah. also, because that number is comparable to the second weekend drop of The Last Jedi, uh, and everyone loves Spider-Man No Way Home, then it also follows, according to Scott Mendelssohn, that everyone must have loved The Last Jedi too. 
and the narrative that people don't like it is just fabrication. Completely unrelatable, right? Yeah, like, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's really okay. A better right argument than what I said thing. earlier was like when Stan Stan Lee got pissed off at Frederick Wortham, and you know, because Frederick Wortham tried to equate that all juvenile delinquents read comic books, and Stan's like, well, almost every kid reads comic books. He's like, all kids drink milk too. Does that mean they're, you know, <laughs> just because one equates with doesn't equate the other, right? Like it's just you're completely drawing two parallels that don't have anything to do with the other. Like, because first of all, they're two completely different franchises. Uh, you're talking a second film and a third, in a, or actually more like the eighth film in a ninth film franchise compared to a technical third point, what, 25th or sixth film in his franchise? He, he, he's, it's not even comparable, right? In any way, shape, or form. And then Shang-Chi bringing that into the mix is just fucking confusing the matter even more, right? Like, what does Shang-Chi have to do with Spider-Man? Like, none of the things that happened with Shang-Chi have anything to do with Spider-Man. Didn't open up on a holiday weekend like Spider-Man did. I mean, Labor Day weekend. Okay, so there you go. All right, well. All right, what it made in one weekend, Spider-Man made in one day. Day, exactly. And then he's, and going back to my point before, I want, I wish Mike was here this morning, uh, and I'm not trying to make him feel bad, but no, like, because he goes and breaks down the, the numbers by day. Scott's not taking into consideration what this movie made every single day of this last week. That's how it got to this billion dollars this weekend. I'm sure he must do privately, but not in public. That's my point. Public, is he's completely he ignoring it for his narrative. Protect. Exactly. He's he's ignoring the fact, oh, sure, it had this percentage of a drop off this weekend, but it, you know, made that much every single fucking day of the week beyond that. <laughs> like, duh, Scotty. <sighs> Sorry, I went rambling there. Uh <laughs> It sounds like you're eating something, Andre. So I'm going to jump to this super chat real quick. Brightest Day, how you doing? Says, so our parent company, Warner Brothers, made us make a sequel. Yeah, that brings us to, to the Matrix, right? Because, uh, you know, $12 million. I thought the Matrix was going to do like 30 I can't believe it did that. It did it. Less than half of my prediction. It did worse than uh, the Suicide Squad. It did, indeed. So what do you think about that? Uh, did you even watch the movie yet? Uh, I haven't had script? time to see it I know it you yet. didn't, Andre, but I don't know scripted yet. I was asking uh, no, I, I finished it off. It took a few attempts. Uh, my first I know you tried watching it once. That's yeah, never a sign of quality when it requires it, multiple A two and a half hour movie took over ten hours of his life away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I fell asleep before the one hour mark, and then I woke up the following morning <laughs> uh, on my sofa. And, uh, yeah, then I, I watched it in sections. It was kind of like, it was as entertaining as an episode of The Flash, because The Flash uh, puts me to sleep, like, immediately, because that is also a very boring show. Um, but, yeah, this one here, I mean, uh, once I managed to get through it, I was like, okay, I see what they're doing. It's okay. It's uh, making fun of reboots and so forth. And But the thing is that it's kind of like an empty story without any real stakes in comparison to the first one. Um some of the acting is not that great. Keanu is actually really good for the first half, but he kind of felt arrested in the second half. It, it, Neil Patrick Harris was awesome, but it just didn't do for me what that first Matrix film did. And I, I just didn't see the point in this this type of story just to get us back to where we were at the end of the, technically at the end of like the second Matrix, I think. Actually, it well, like, it's more like the end of the first Matrix, but yeah. Well, Still, it's a regardless. bit of both because you got Trinity now yeah, doing but, the same thing. Yeah. But so you don't think it's too likely that we'll be getting like two more sequels to this thing? I doubt it. <laughs> no way in hell. Not a chance. Um, well, I, I, you can go ahead and bring that back up because I was going to get to that. But like, you know, one of the scenes that sticks out in the Matrix is where they say, you know, Warner Brothers said they're they're going to do this with or without us. And I know we kind of brought that up last week, but I, I'm really starting to feel like that was probably one of the cases here. Like this was it's some weird. kind of right situation. <laughs> Honestly, it would have been better if they had done the movie without them. Because that way, I agree. They, would still, they still would have gotten paid. And it wouldn't have been a blot on the Wachowski record. And Lord yep. knows there's loads of the, those already. Right. And, then they, and then they could always go and say, it should have come to us. Now you need to hire us for something else to come back and fix this. I mean, well, they could have they could have maneuvered this into another movie. But now it's just yet another black guy in... A non-stop lineup of black guys since you know the first Matrix. 
I was going to say, like, at this point, do they even have a career after this? I mean, I know the one had nothing to do with this, but, like, this was... That's I the mean, only That's the, the only reason... The Wachowski like, name will still be painted. Well, that's my point, is, like, because... Bef- the to answer your question from before, Andre, the only reason I think they are involved in this, at least the one of them, is because they have nothing else. I think that they've pretty much burnt everything they can do at this point because they've gotten past the the point where they don't even put their name on their movies anymore. I mean, everything they do flops. So I don't yeah, know. I mean their their name is no longer a seal of quality. It was the, it used to be like a time after the Matrix when everything was like from the yeah they had V for visionary. Directors of the Matrix, and now it's yeah. the, they're the visionary directors who make a bunch of crap that you don't want. I mean, V for Vendetta. I don't think it did great at the box office, but I think it was well received. But that, yeah, okay, that was pretty okay. And then you but... had S- Speed Racer, which I said has its own little cult following. But beyond that, everything they've Emphasis done: Jupiter Ascending, Lando. Cloud Atlas. What else did they do? Uh, there's like two or three other things they've done that have just completely. They did Sense Eight. That TV Sense Eight. Yeah. How was that? Not, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, that just goes to show like how corporate, you know, think, I, I think they, they were going to lose the rights if they didn't do something. And I think that the Wachowskis were involved because they had the ability to, and that was it. But I could be wrong. But speaking of, uh, of uh, companies, Michael Miller brings up Viacom again and says that here the stock fall, stock call in February is going to be explosive and a bloodbath for executives. Well, I have no doubt it will. I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can... I mean, the the mismanagement of Viacom CVS, not by, by poor Shoddy Redstone, who really needs to go in and fire everyone because they're destroying her company and her legacy really really are it's mismanaged to hell it's unbelievable exactly how how something can be as mismanaged as when you're expecting the guys from south park to save your company you're fucked well they're the best that they have i mean that's all they got are the a-listers that and they have a bunch of alex kurtzman that only keeps on bringing the, the company down to the ground and yeah, they, I mean, they ensured that there's no recovery for Star Trek. They're running that into the ground. So, like, what the hell are they thinking? Exactly. And well, actually, they're... we do know they're thinking woke, because the because the there's like the the issue. The executives aren't concerned with making money for the company, or so at the le- very least it seems. Instead, they appear to be all about virtue signaling and the cocktail parties and stuff like that. On someone else's dime. Yeah, and speaking of that, Rogue Handle says it's all about spreading propaganda and the agenda. Communists do not care about profits. Well, that's kind of where Scotty comes from, in a sense. Well, actually, more... here's like the thing that that um, uh, communists care about profits more than anyone else, provided they themselves get it, and those are the yeah. people at the top. And then you have all the useful idiots below them. They're the ones that do the actual destruction. Pretty much. Uh, And then uh, Naked Fame says Shari Redstone is the embodiment of greed. Yeah, when you said that, I wasn't so sure. Like, I'd be like, I don't know if she's the answer per se. I mean, she's the one who put a lot of these people in place too now. Yeah, and now she she needs to understand that in order to be a good greedy person, she needs to fire everyone and start over because she has wrong people running her company. She needs to hire greedy people that want to make money rather than communists that want to send a message. And she has too many of those, and they're destroying her company. Yeah, transfer them all to Western Union. That Their, it, their entire specialty is sending messages. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, she may be the embodiment of greed, but she has been a very poor embodiment of that so far. She needs to do better. She needs to be more greedy. And to that end, she needs to hire she needs to act like daddy. be greedy. Go fuck a bunch of bitches, eat some steaks, and make Star Trek better again. Then you'll be better. Yeah. What she needs to do is, uh, is like uh, hire executives and say, okay, I want you to make money for me. And in order for you to make money to, for me, you're going to get like a huge cut of the money that you make for me. I want no message, nothing like that. Just do whatever you need to do to make money by way of the people wanting our products. Greed is the solution. Not saying it's good, but uh, Gordon Gecko has never been more right than right now. Greed, 
for lack of better word, fighting what they're certainly fighting within Viacom CBS is good. Well, and this is what I don't get, right? Like, okay, first of all, you never want to give the customer something they don't want. You want to give them something they want. But the problem we usually run into with corporations normally in the past is they try to fill it up with things that, you know, cost less for them and, and, you know, make the product less for us. When it comes to entertainment, there's no real need for that. And especially when you're spending the kind of money that they've been spending on these movies nowadays, like we should be getting these dream projects, right? Like, absolutely. Yeah. We should. <laughs> instead of we're getting nightmare projects. No, there's no reason in a world where we're spending $200 million on a production that we shouldn't be able to get, you know, basically just about any, there, there's, there's no, okay. We should be able to if see I every may, single dollar in that yeah, movie. We shouldn't yeah, be able to say, I oh, may. I can do this on my phone better. <laughs> yeah. If I may, every single movie at that price tag should be Spider-Man No Way Home. Exactly. Great. That's yeah. a great example, right? Like, Because my point was going to be a little bit different, but it's it's true. Like, okay, back in the day, the whole thing with Lord of the Rings was it was unfilmable, right? Dune was unfilmable. We've hit the point where that's not a problem anymore. You can basically do anything. The only thing that stops you from doing it is your own imagination and maybe something that's just so existentially, you know, impossible to turn into a script. And then it's I would just say, a challenge. Yeah. It's no, no imagination more. and education. You need to add no stuff in order to imagine things that you don't have to fill the gaps of what you don't know. Right. Exactly. So um, and, and that's a hard thing to reconcile, because, again, when you take a look at some of these movies, like 150, 100, 120, 180, 200 million dollar production they should be relatively immaculate. And that starts all the way from the, the source. Like, is the concept good? Yes. What type of story are we telling? It's, you know, a hero's journey or, you know, a mystery or any other genre. Okay, great. How do we do this the best we can? But we don't have that at any point because it's all about being at the first at the in the race as opposed to being the best in the race. And, I mean, in some cases, the best can also be the first. But it's like, nah, it's a different type of race. It doesn't follow the same type of rules um as normal an athletic event it's basically you just have to be the the best on the field and and do what you can and it's really really hard to do that if you're so set on just being the first to say i did this this and this instead of realizing like you may have done it first but i did it best and that's kind of like where it is right like the, the old sci-fi genre films of like the b movies and whatnot yeah they did it first but then george lucas comes around he does it best and then star trek on the tv side of things they did sci-fi better than Irwin allen they they didn't necessarily do it first but they did do it better uh so you yeah. know that's kind of what you have to sort of re uh, realign your your perspectives it's not so much about being the first it's about being the best and that I'm glad you brought that up. Is good. Because I think that's a lot of the problem with a lot of the mentality of some of these people going into this. You know, politics aside, it's this whole idea of I've got to be the first. You know, that we saw that especially with Star Trek. Oh, the first black captain, the first this, the first that. It's like, no, you guys clearly need to watch your own goddamn show. Yeah, or, <laughs> or my favorite, be the first Asian to ever star in an action film. In yeah, that was yeah. the biggest, dumbest take ever. Like, oh, like, Bruce Lee never the people happened? in your movie already did that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so fun to listen to, like, that idiot in, in Shang-Chi, I forget his name, Simu Liu, Simu who's Liu. also doing gangbusters in, like, that selling sunset or, like, that scripted reality show about realtors and stuff like that. That's, like, his other big role right now. And how he's like, oh, I didn't have anyone looking like me growing up. There were no action people starring Asians. There were no kung fu movies. None of that. I'm the well, first. That's that, unbelievable. I that mean, brings us if back that's to not Mr. gaslighting, I don't know yeah. what is. Well, that brings us right back to Mr. Uh, you know, Gaslighting Mendelssohn here, because that's where he's sticking up for Shang-Chi. This is where it really boils down to, guys. Because notice, they went hardcore after anybody and everybody who kept trying to say Shang-Chi was a failure. And they're, they're hanging on this idea that just because it barely possibly, maybe made its money back that that is some kind of fucking success and honestly i would argue that in the during the current state of affairs i know that my take is on uh, is unpopular here but but it financially given where we where the marketplace has been the past year and a half it, it actually is a success. At least I thought it was until Spider Man. Now you see that it's really exactly not that my big point. a success at all. That gives I mean, me right back. That, to that should be like the, the, the real takeaway here is that 
holy shit, Spider-Man proves that uh, that Shang-Chi wasn't a success. On the contrary, it shows what a massive bump it was. And so was the Eternals. In fact, I would imagine Bob Chapek was knocking on Kevin Feige's door this morning. Or actually, you should say, got a call Take to come to his office, I should say. Yeah, well, and, he's probably uh, going to do that for cookie and cakes anyway, because I'm. this is like the Iger's last week. But Bob is going to be like, okay, now that Spider-Man did this, what is Shang-Chi and Eternal's fucking excuse? Yeah. <laughs> and Black Widow, if you want to add that to the mix. Yeah. Because he's technically had three movies now in a row. And, and that's what I love about Scotty's little fucking badass take here. Because if he just kept his mouth shut, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. But now we just get to say the obvious. And that was, since Spider-Man proved that people want to see certain Marvel movies. Now, note what I just said. Certain Marvel movies. Guess what? We've reached a point where people can be picky and choosy. And movies like Shang-Chi and The Eternals don't necessarily have to be must-see entertainment now to be able to enjoy Spider-Man. That's where they lost the crowd. This is what they've tried to do from the beginning. This is what made Marvel, you know, the thing to, that you had to see every single fucking movie to know what the hell was going on, you know. Now that's not so much the case. I've not seen Shang-Chi. I ain't seen The Eternals. I've only seen, a, if, luckily, a, maybe a third of the Marvel TV shows, if you can call it that, as far as the recent ones. I watched the rest of uh, Hawkeye, and I've seen half of, Black, of uh, WandaVision. So even only seeing that, I still enjoyed Spider-Man No Way Home without having any problems understanding what was going on, who the characters were, and all that business. So you've just lost what you had to make everybody have to go see movies like Captain Marvel. And that is the question that should be being asked right now. Not this shit. This is just a bunch of Fugazi. This is just Scott trying to stick up for Shang-Chi. Because just like just like Simi Liu and everybody else who were sitting there trying to be like, yay, look what we fucking did. Yeah, guess what? It makes you look like a bunch of assholes right now because Spider-Man just took a big shit all over your box office. You know, I should actually add, add that to the editorial since we're not done with it yet. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. think by but the we... end of the year, Spider-Man will have made more than all three of those movies combined. I think so, too. Yeah. It pretty much almost has already. Yeah, it's well, getting there. At the end of the year, it's like three days away. So, yeah. I mean, Shang-Chi made 400-something, I think, worldwide. Eternals did what? It wasn't that much. No. It, I mean, no one cared about 200? Eternals. And then Black Widow. We I never think. heard more about it. I mean, it just kind of like quietly it dropped off the map. It away. was such a failure, wasn't it? I'm going to go check right now how much it I think it only uh, made like 300-some. No, yeah. Eternals made 400 worldwide. Okay, so and then, oh, really? I think, and then what did... Uh, what did That's uh, disappointing. I mean, for us, not for Marvel, but uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm willing actually, to bet that it only has to hit like 12, 1.2 billion to have beaten all three of those movies, because I think uh, Black Widow did like roughly the same. It actually could beat all Black of Black Widow those. did 379. So yeah, you've got, uh, yeah, 12, 1.2 billion is probably the... the, the if he crosses that, it will have made more than all, all three of those movies combined. It has a chance to do that before the end of the year. Yeah. Certainly over the course of its run. Just, I mean, got what weekend, else is coming that could threaten it? Nothing for a bit. Exactly. I mean, the only thing that can uh, can threaten is uh, is like the variant that sounds like a Transformer. Morbius is the only thing coming but... up. That I think will be any competition for this. Yeah, more. I I don't think that Morbius could be a pretty okay movie, actually. Well, that's what I'm saying. We've reached a point where the only competition that Spider Man's going to have is its own competition, right? Like, because Morbius is technically another Sony movie. Well, mm -hmm. with the Spider within the Spider Man mythos kind of thing. So there you go. Like it's, and this is it's why I think Venom verse mythos. Look, I'll be honest with you. Part of the reason why I think Venom did so fucking well this last fall was because people got word of what was going on with Spider-Man. And that kind of goes back to the original idea of this whole thing with the thumbnail is nostalgia done right. Like word got out there what we were getting out of this movie and people were interested in seeing it. Now, if this movie would have sucked, 
this movie would have fell off. It would have had a great big weekend like it did the first weekend. But Scotty would have had a little bit more of a point here had the movie, you know, not made anything in between there. But the movie has pretty much made all the monies, right? <laughs> like we're getting to that point where there's not, not that much more money it can make in the markets it's at. It just has a few more markets to open up in. Like almost everybody has seen this movie. I mean, I'm sure there's individuals in the chat who have not, and I get that, and I'm not trying to, you know, single anybody out, but I'm just saying, like, we've reached that point of maximum exposure. You know what I mean? Like, like most of the point we're at now is like people like Mike who are going to see it for the third time. Lucky bastard. I know, and I'm not trying <laughs> yeah. to make you feel bad, Andre, but I think my point is sound is that we've really reached that maximum point where almost anybody who was going to go see this movie was is pretty much already seen it. Like we're down to the to the, the the people that just haven't had a chance to, which you know is small, probably amount of number in comparison. Yeah, the population of Norway for one, but uh, exactly, yeah, <laughs> the population of Norway, which is like Texas. <laughs> actually, I think that I mean there's Texas five is bigger. I think actually, so Texas, yeah. Texas would be bigger in terms of in terms of population. I mean, exactly. most Norwegians live in like three cities, and it's pretty dense or scarce population in between those so I, I i i don't know where scott's coming up with this but i gotta imagine bob's having a field day right now with kevin oh i'm sure i'm sure i mean I kevin's mean, dealing with like multiple fucking things right now hey this is high, gonna be but... the biggest the best christmas present that bob shapebeck got of all and i'm sure kevin's on a high right now because of this box office and that's great but you know, th again, that this asks the bigger question. What the fuck happened with these last three movies that you did wrong that you did right here? And I, we know the answer. going to threaten for Sony to be uh, in the boardroom meetings for the rest of the Marvel no. I don't think Sony had anything to do with this. this is I the don't thing think they that, did either. Yeah. This is the thing that things, uh, the, the, the people need to get out of their head right now. And I know people keep bringing this up. As much as you want to say Sony had to do with this movie, yeah, they 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 put it out there. That's it. And they get to reap the benefits from it. But it was still Kevin's people behind it. They had very little to say over it, and if they did, it was just minor notes probably. From what I've heard, they've kept Amy Pascal as fucking far away from shit as they can. I can't blame her. Or and blame, Tom Rothman is somebody he can sit there and take all the, 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 the you know, credit for everything all day long, but he don't do anything. He stays away from these things. He hates yeah. them. He has a good job in this sense. Mm -hmm. No, this is one of the weirdest things in the world. Since I started working with Midnight's Edge, we have... See, like we have had some cathartic shit happen in the last few weeks and months and years. And then we even seen things like with like Tom Rothman, where the guy managed to make a comeback in himself and we got to give him fucking credit. Right. Oh, like yeah. he was the worst thing that ever happened to Fox. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, but yet he's the best thing that ever happened to Sony. You know, and the first thing he did when he came in is cut the budget of Ghostbusters 2016. I guarantee that some bitch wouldn't have happened if he was there. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Like Amy Pascal would have sunk more money into it. I mean, it's just... <sighs> which would have made for an even bigger loss, which would have been kind of... No, we would have got... If, if Amy Pascal would have still been head of Sony, we would have got... We'd have been on Ghostbusters Answer the Call 3 by now. Oh, yeah. Probably. Just to I prove mean, a fucking point. Yeah, and, and then we still wouldn't have gotten that silver and black film. But, um, well, I mean, the joke that I was making is that Chapek could actually throw a lot of shade over at Feige for this. He'd be like, yes. why is this movie there? Do I have to get Sony involved? Like, what's really going on here? Because, again, he's going to weaponize the, the trades, and he's probably going to use that for his, uh, uh, to his advantage if he's a smart businessman, which, I mean, I may not like, uh, like some of the tactics he's done before, but you got to give um, Chapek props with the posturing he's doing, at least in the, in the circle of public opinion. Well, Please. Rothman's doing the same thing, even though he exactly, has really, yeah. <laughs> They're taking all the credit they can for it, and good for them. It's making Disney look a little bad. You know, even though we're one of the few pointing out that, yeah, well, actually, Disney deserves just as much of the, or at least the Marvel Studios does, we should say. Yeah, or actually, most of it, because this movie couldn't have happened without them. Yeah, fine. Uh, it's Sony's doing that they opened up their archives and allowed the use of like their villains and stuff from earlier movies and everything. But still, this movie couldn't have come together without the Marvel Studios input. I mean, they brought uh, Doctor Strange. They made the magic happen. 
Well, and we remind everybody the reason they're in the place they are right now is because of Amy Pascal and whoever else decided they had to do that quote unquote 25% different universe surrounding Peter because they didn't want the other characters, you know, in limbo for four years, much like the Netflix deal. Yeah, exactly. Which we also have a video coming out. Yes. About. And uh, I did finish watching uh, Hawkeye, and there's been a lot of rumblings about uh, the whole connection. And, uh, I feel like we're headed into STD and or more so uh, just the original Star Trek 09 Paramount deal all over again, it feels like. Only a different set of circumstances. We're going to get a lot of confusion from people already. I can see it. Because this yeah. is not the same Kingpin. I don't care what fucking people say. No, this of course is it's not, not the same it's Kingpin. 25 it's 25 percent different Kingpin. As it's we more detail, Marvel <laughs> yeah. As we detail uh -huh. in, as well, because I don't know how far you've gotten in the third video that's waiting for you, Tom. But Kim Ping is broken down. I haven't down looked in at it yet. But I, I pretty it's much twenty-five percent different Kim sure. Ping. Twenty-five. I'm sure I'm the one who inspired its inspiration to. to He's exist. a little closer to his comic book counterpart in the physicality. He has to he be. He yeah. has to be, uh, and you know why? Uh, because the version of Kim Ping who was grounded and who had normal human strength, which is like st normal for a man his size, which is still bloody strong and can beat the shit out of most people, but still that grounded, more human version, that's a proper property of Netflix. He ain't that no more. Used. He uh, you have you anymore. have to you have to do twenty five percent different King King that doesn't have the elements that were unique to Netflix. Meaning you have to go back to the comics. That means that we're talking about someone with borderline superhuman strength, which is what he has in Hawkeye, and he's going to have in the MCU. Oh yeah, and they brought back his cane, the the certain ring. Yeah. Um. They they put him more into the white jacket, which I mean, not, he had the white he in. had the he had the white jacket in Netflix too, but that doesn't matter because that was part of the comics, and Marvel yeah. owns the comics. See, here he's wearing, he doesn't have, like, he's not as suave either. Like, there's a few minor, just little things I could pick out. And yeah. just the way he acted and all this bullshit. Oh, it, that is 25% different. And I yeah, think that's, in this one, he's still, he's married and he's got his kid uh, at this point. Where in the Netflix one, he, that was the beginning of his relationship. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. They don't really get into any, like, there's nothing to really attach it at all. And of course he should be, because, uh, because in the comics, his son Richard... Uh, becomes the Rose. He's an adult, and I do hope that they're going to do that storyline because that was a brilliant one that tied in with the Hobgoblin and everything. Mm -hmm. That was like some of the best years of the Spider-Man comics. Yeah, and then speaking of the Kingsman, though, because we keep overlooking it, just like everybody did, and this is why, as Fat Elvis brought up here in the chat earlier, the trailer was shown years ago. This movie was done years ago. Like, I think most people just completely f forgot about it, and they didn't do any advertising whatsoever for this movie. It was very, very little. And uh, it was just one of those that Disney acquired, and I don't think they gave a shit. I think they Disney acquired it in the midst of production, and they, they did, didn't cancel yeah. it. So, I mean, and the other part, too, it's Matthew Vaughn, who I think he's a pretty, pretty solid filmmaker. He has some missteps here and there, but he knows how to you know, make a really entertaining from those who have film. said it, they said it's good. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I've heard a lot of positive things for it. I, I I'm looking for somewhere where I can watch it because it's not available in my area yeah, right it'll now. It'll probably be on digital before long. Yeah, because I really enjoyed the first Kingsman, uh not so much the second, but uh I like uh I like the cast for this new one coming up. So yeah. I want to check it out, see what the it's original like. original one even has like a great Norwegian actor who plays the Prime Minister of Sweden. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, and I think the second film played a big factor into this. Yeah. From what people, I, I said, see that actor in Oslo every once in a while. Well, people have said they didn't like the second film as much, and that goes to a lot of what Andre and I continually try to remind people: is nine times out of ten, what a movie does has more to do with what the previous movie does. Like Spider Man: No Way Home is an anomaly. Had this just been a straight third movie, had had Amy done what she probably was planning on doing. I don't think this movie would have been as popular. We wouldn't have gotten oh, no, the whole... far from it. Yeah, we got far from far from home what we got. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. I mean, for those that try to say, oh, the Spider-Man brand can't go wrong. Well, actually, Sony had to come crawling to Marvel in the first place, didn't they? Because Spider-Man can go wrong. They proved yeah. that with the amazing Spider-Man 2. Yep, Alex Kirschman strikes again. 
Yeah, <laughs> Gary, Ron, in my opinion, The Amazing Spider-Man Part 1, because I hate that movie even more. I don't like that one either, yeah. And I mean, yeah, again, I got to... Yeah. Nope. Go ahead, script. They they had the wrong approach to the Peter Parker side of the character, but they had a right approach to the Spider-Man part in the first Amazing Spider-Man, like the attitude stuff. But uh, like they made him this like you know the skateboarding kid, a, a loner type of guy who's we're supposed to buy is is smart. It, it's yeah, just didn't work out too well, yeah. in my opinion. That's I agree. But at least this new film got gave him some redemption, and I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, if there's something that's going to happen, like this is, this is a big deal guys. Like anybody who thought that this is like anybody who thinks this is some slam dunk on Disney and Sony's going to go off on their own. No, this is going to solidify any future talks. Actually, yeah, actually Mikey Sutton already, uh, already reported on that. that there is surprised. a new deal. It's a new long-term deal. So Spider-Man is going to stay with uh, with Marvel for a very, very long time to come. Although the movie kind of ended in a way where everyone in the MCU has for, forgotten about Spider-Man and he's free to go and chart out his new path in the Sony movies. That's not what's happening. I'm sure there's going to be something to fix that. Oh, if not, like I said, it just sets them up. And this is what I've been telling everybody for a while now, the shit I've been hearing, mm -hmm. is that the New Deal did away with any of that 25% different bullshit. Yep. Like, that's why that from here on out, I guarantee you, we're going to start seeing more characters that we're used to seeing in the Spider-Man universe. We're going to see a more comic accurate version of them because now that those chains are off. And now there's, the, I was even surprised when I'm starting to hear that there, there might even be a whole possibility of the whole Venom thing because I figured that's why they set it up the way they did so Kevin could do, do his own thing but hey you know whatever I'm not going to get into spoilers here but if they do it that way that's their own call like Sutton also reports in. that uh, Venom 3 will feature that's Tom my Holland. point I didn't want to get too deep into it all because I, I know there's still some people who haven't seen any you know everything involved here but and again that goes back to my initial point of that's why i think venom did so well and i think morbius is going to do much better because of this like if you had dropped morbius prior to this movie i don't think it would have done very well now if, after this movie i bet you morbius is going to do a hell of a lot better than anybody ever anticipated probably and i bet you the next trailer that comes out for morbius is very spider-man centric or at least it does everything it can to tie it to spider-man or Venom centric. Well, that too. Well, this last two trailers, that's what they've done. You had Michael Keaton in the mural in the first trailer, and then you had the whole Venom joke in the second trailer. Yeah. So I guarantee you, whatever the unless that's that's the final trailer. Um, well, there's TV spots and stuff to come yet too. We'll we'll probably get a lot more ties here and there, little little tidbits. But let's get through some of these super chats here real quick before we move into our next story because. Uh, we got some more stuff to talk about when it comes to Sony. Uh, I bypassed the compressor, says Andre. I read Rendez. Oh, you're going to have Rendezvous. Rendezvous with Rama. Okay. Over the last two days, based on your recent recommendations. Such a great book. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yes, R right. Rendezvous with Rama. Is that the Rama. way it's spelled? What? And not with the two hyphens in That's there. That's what I was going to say. Uh, now, if you put it together, I would have been able to say it right. So I was like, what okay. the fuck? Yeah, no, it's wrong. Rendez Vos, it looks like to me. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed the movie. Oh, sorry, the book. It is such a great book. And imagine Denis Villeneuve. Now that you've read it, can you think of a more perfect perfect pairing between oh, that's the villain and director than than mm -hmm. uh, than Rendezvous with Rama and Denis Villeneuve? It's that's perfect. His... It's a match made in heaven. All right, I forgot that's his project that he's working on. All right. Jace Fox sends in 55 Norwegian Corona, says, thanks for letting me become part of this fellowship and having me on the show last time and hail to you guys in the chat. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. definitely be having you on again soon, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and for those that want to see that, check out the Christmas special, a special which right now uh, is up with all our other live shows over at Midnight's Edge Live Archives. That's where you'll find all past live shows for those that may be curious about that. I mean, this yeah. one... Also, we'd only stay up here on the main channel for like a, a day, two at most, and then it's straight up to live archives. Yeah, those are probably the questions we get the most in the comments, and I'm glad you brought that up. Is anything that you can't find on the main channel, go to the live archives or go to the playlists. Because yeah. the way YouTube works, like it's it's better for us to leave up just the main topic videos. So 
and the um because like uh, the, the, these like three four hour live streams if we were to leave them all up they would clutter up the channel and make it impossible to find anything else yeah and there's also that early. aspect yeah so live archives head on over there yep. for the for live shows then we got Vigilante Williamson in the house who sends in two dollars. Says Miles Morales and Spider Gwen are coming. Well, well surprise me. <sighs> I don't like either one of them to be honest. With you. I know people like Spider Gwen just because she looks hot in that skin tight uniform, but I just think that is the I'm, her fucking name is in her fucking hero name. <laughs> just, no, on the top title, yeah. I think she's Spider Girl in her universe, but. Uh, <sighs> Tom, if you're going to be a superhero, you know what you should be? Bat the Hulk. Oh, wait. Okay, I think we got that one already. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can't be the Hulk, then yes, yeah, I'll be Batman. <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable with this. Especially now that I can grow my beard in the Kuvish. In the Kuvish? What do you call it? The thing outside. It won't let me fight crime. No. Yeah, he's been very cooped up lately. Uh, and, and very upset about that. But we also have Midnight Sun in the house. Yeah, yeah I also saw that we uh, that uh, we have uh, Mr. Gina Carano in the house. So, drunk, if you want to hop on, we'll send you the link. <laughs> I'll send you the link, but he's usually just listening in. Uh, if he gets a chance to, if he's not busy, busy, like he always is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we miss you, buddy. I'll send you the link if you're free. Um, but go ahead and grab that super chat while I do that. Yeah, Midnight Sun says for thirteen ninety nine Canadian dollars, eh? Hello, everyone. Did anyone see Benedict's combat match performance as Julian Assange in The Fifth Estate? Hopefully, a Assange story will have a happy ending soon. Hashtag free Assange. You know what? I have seen that movie. I have. And I will say that Benedict Cumberbatch is a great actor. Uh, but him playing real people is, is perhaps not his strength. Because um, every single time I have seen him play an individual, a real-life individual that someone else has played too, like, for instance, Stephen Hawking, who we also played, then someone else did better. Um, so, so, yeah, I've seen the movie. It's really cool. I really remember that revelation in the movie when it was like, how many people are actually behind... Uh, like uh, Assange uh, news page, like WikiLeaks. Is it a huge team? That's just him. That was that was pretty cool. So uh, so yeah, and I agree with that hashtag. And for those that are into historical dramas, uh, it's uh, it's uh, worth uh, absolutely worth checking out. But uh, in my opinion, not uh, Cumberbatch's finest performance. Script. Have you seen The Fifth Estate? Um, I think so. I it's it's came out like what five years ago or so. I think it has to be more than that. More than that, yeah. It's a while ago. I remember it being the top. I, of the it was probably before he had like his big break. Uh, it was right after Sherlock. Yeah. Yeah, it was around then. I think it's like closer to ten years ago. The yeah, it might the be five. that long. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's uh, well, well worth, uh, well worth watching. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to head into the repository behind the, behind the scenes here because I don't see exactly where the next super chat is. So give me one second. I'm going to grab it straight from here. That means you're just going to have to listen. Um, <clears throat> the next so, one I have is Michael Miller. Uh, let's see. That would be the next one, yes. Says if the Spider Man brand is unstoppable, how do they justify the Amazing Spider Man 2 making less in its theatrical run than this did in 10 days? Alex um, Kurtzman. Alex well, Kurtzman. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Alex Kurtzman, that's one thing. But also, as we said before, it's all about protecting the narrative and lying to protect the narrative. The, the Spider Man he... brand is not unstoppable, as Alex Kurtzman certainly proved. But now, yeah. retroactively, suddenly it is, because otherwise, uh, it means that a narrative-free movie can be popular with the people, and that doesn't fit the narrative. Just like people ignore the fact that Spider-Verse is the lowest-grossing one, but, you know, they just use the excuse that it's a cartoon. Uh, Adam Wolfert says it'd be like comparing a Space Marine from Warhammer 40K to a Federation Elite Soldier. Yes, both are top-level, but which one 
you want to protect you and your family, that's your guy opinion. Yeah, if you can come up with a million. What's your guy's opinion? Uh, what, what it means is who would we want to protecting and protecting? I us? don't know enough about Warhammer to answer that. Warhammer Sorry, or a Federation elite soldier. Yeah, a Federation elite soldier is that from from like Starfleet? Is that what it means? I don't know unless he means all from Warhammer 40k, which I know very little okay, about. Okay, you know what? I'm if I don't know too much about Warhammer 40k, but but from what I have seen of Star Trek, their elite soldiers, every single one gets their ass kicked by by uh, by Michael Burnham. So I'm gonna go with the unknown rather than those I know to be completely useless. So the, I'll do the Warhammer variety. Yeah. And joining us now, a very, very special gentleman. Thank you so much for being here, Jay. How are you? Ah, uh, thank you for the invite. I can't stay too long, but I no appreciate problem. appreciate you asking me to hop on. Oh, absolutely! Thanks for joining us. How are things? And continued. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. Things are very good. Very Glad happy. Things are good. Awesome. Cool. Any special projects you've been working on that you wanted to? To bring up real quick or anything going on? Uh, special? I don't know, man. Things are just kind of whirlwinding as they go. Um, not too much. Actually, this week I'm just trying to catch my breath from this year, traveling and right. all this stuff and starting different things. And <laughs> Excuse me. Hopefully next year um, I'll, I'll find a better <laughs> like uh, organizational timeline of how to Instead of just jumping from one thing to the next, you know, where people are just like, hey, you want to yeah. go to Vegas? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's just go. <laughs> you want to go to New York? Yeah, let's go. Why not? Maybe we'll just <laughs> I'll be a little more organized with life instead of that. But uh, things are good, man. The podcast is doing well. Um, I have no complaints. Made some incredible connections this past year. Life is life is good. It's good. Awesome. Thank you for awesome. asking. Yeah. Well, we're glad yeah, to have no. you here this morning. Um, well, we weren't going to talk any Star Wars, but since I have you here, because your name is Drunk 3PO, <laughs> I got to ask you about this, because I, I, I come across this the other day, and I, I found a little bit about it, but it's just like, I'm just like a whole lot of, what the hell is this? Uh, this has come across m my attention, or however you want to put it, the Tales of the Jedi. Now, is this a new series, or what the heck is this? Because this, I guess, leaked out of some Lucasfilm uh, Christmas uh, deal that had all this yeah. stuff and i don't know how much you know about this or what what is going on with this sadly uh, i've kind of checked out <laughs> gotcha. Tales of the jedi is an older EU, yeah it's a comic book thing yeah so i don't know if they just redid it or just decided this stuff doesn't sell unless we throw some old stuff in <laughs> so uh that's right right now i know that they are over this hotel stuff like that's just I'm like needy. Yeah, tell us that. about that. You yeah, know, so, actually, okay, you've been I, keeping up with that. There you go. Yeah, I find that incredibly fascinating because I like I'm not into the parks and stuff like that, but everything that I have heard of this hotel, the, everything I've seen is cringe. The price point, I mean, they obviously don't want normal people. I mean, they might as well have called it like the exclusive Star Wars resort for all us rich people where none of the pleb can afford to come disturb us. Yeah. I mean, that should be like the full title. What's going on with this thing? I mean, and what have you heard from the inside? I'm sure are anyone happy about this nightmare? Are, are anyone happy about like this parting gift from Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy who landed this bullcrap in in uh, Bob Chapek's hands? Yeah, so I was actually uh honored enough to kind of I have a I have a good friend that works there and um they I got pictures and everything like they they gave me the whole rundown and they 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 announced this hotel, you know, at during their D23. Is that what it's called? Conference. And then when they opened up the uh, registration for bookings, it booked up from March until June. And then they started releasing like pictures and video and commercials. And people were like, yeah, no, nah, that ain't what I thought it was going to be. So I, I don't need to go. And so they just started canceling. Basically, what it is is a six thousand dollar two night. Um, if you understand the term LARPing experience, where so if Tom was going, if we sent Tom to cover it for Midnight's Edge, 
Yeah. They would want Tom to dress up in Job of the like, Hut. Oh, there you go. Well, whatever. <laughs> Some, something. Or a Gamorrean and, guard, if I'm lucky, maybe. And they want him to be part of. Uh, Tom, before you get excited, I'm not putting up a six thousand dollar bill to put you to, to have you dress as Boba Fett. If you give me six thousand dollars to go on a trip, the last place I'm fucking going is that place. <laughs> well, so basically, they want they would want Tom to be in a character for two days and take part in helping the resistance or helping the First Order take over the ship so that's pretty much what it is so th- so it's just they just bring everybody together which is going to be weird because with the mandates and restrictions um i don't know how they're gonna i don't know how they're gonna do this so it's 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 I mean, interesting they they've made the group rooms by group or what and then you're gonna i they try it down between from what or... i've what they've told me from some of the actors that are involved is like they get one shot at this so even if you look at the scheduling, there's a 30 minute break where everyone is supposed to be together and the first order takes over the ship and you could either be like, hey, Kylo, there's the spy over there or or no, we're with Team Ray and Ray and Kylo Ren fight and it's supposed to be a really uh, acrobatic show. So everybody's in the mid- OK, so basically what you're telling me is at this point you get everybody who's doing this and together and then they go oh you can go one way or the other is what you're saying so like if yeah, a bunch of people like, decide to to snake out the spy then and then the other half get pissy about it then that ruins everybody's experience. I, yeah i don't apparently they're preparing for multiple experiences for how what kind oh, of Jesus. crowd shows up i thought you were going to say they're preparing for multiple cancellations and multiple <laughs> refunds i, I can think see this right now a disaster I really think exactly, Tom. I think right now they are scrambling to change it. They made the rooms very plain and other things uh, very plain because they don't want people in their rooms. They want people out. And the excursion is a three-hour trip to Disney's Hollywood Studios. <laughs> so was the trip on Gilligan's you know Island. Sounds, yeah, I know this sounds like it's going to be to me. This sounds like it's going to be the LARPing version of Spider-Man Turn of the Dark. Another Spider-Man oh, project shit. that wasn't supposed to fail and kind of did. How many also people did that kill? A live audience. <laughs> <laughs> and and this, this sounds like it has all the hallmarks of failing in that way, only on the LARPing stage for well, $6,000 of tickets. Just remember, the, the, the SS Minnow is only supposed to be taking a three-hour tour That's as true. well. I just find it like weird where it's just like and they're trying to promote it like, hey, exciting. We're all going to take a trip to Galaxy's Edge, which is in Holly, which is in one of the Disney parks where if you really wanted to go to Galaxy's Edge, you could just buy a park ticket. I don't know. It sounds like for, a death trap. Or like a hundred, you know, a hundred plus dollars and just go. Um, so exactly. this is on a ship That's ship, a, right? Or is this what is this? The yeah. So that's part of the experience. Um, where you go to a dinner theater and then there's like spies in there that are so basically it's like they want you to think of it as a dinner theater cruise that you're part of the show. So if Tom was there and it's like, okay, it's time for dinner, Tom will go sit down at dinner. They will have an actor probably sitting at your dinner table with you. That's probably an alien or something. And you have, and you get to talk to him or her or it or whatever it is. And it's supposed to be fun. And then you're supposed to play cards. Uh, You know, they're going to teach you how to win the Falcon in that card game. And you'll probably play with aliens and things like that. The lightsaber training is pretty bad. It's just a light show with the lightsaber. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is they advertise that retractable lightsaber. And um, I don't know if you guys saw that where I heard about this anyway, yeah, and you said they couldn't get it working or some shit. So yeah, it extends, but you never see it retract. And there's only about four of them made, and it's only for the it's only for Ray to use uh, in the hotel, like when she comes. uh, Sorry, spoilers if people were gonna go and be surprised, but Ray was gonna she ignites it and you know goes after Kylo Ren. Remember, this takes place right after the Last Jedi. They want to keep it in the same timeline. So. Yeah, the one person who can probably afford it is so upset with you right now, Jay. 
I mean, it's just, I keep telling people, I was like, I'll be honest. But here's the funny thing is the first week is booked up by theme park vloggers and YouTubers. So I think they, I think they're letting them go for free because I know two of them. And I was like, are you going? They're like, yeah, they, they hooked me up. Oh, they is didn't that tell how they me got it sold out? Like that was the whole thing is they were selling that it was sold out. Yeah. It's going to be hilarious if some, if, if like when Ray comes up and someone says, boo, where's Luke? Oh, shit. I mean, anything's possible. They'll just be oh. like, who's Luke? Or Sounds to me like island. more people will be asking where baby Yoda is from what you were saying before. Yeah, if they say who's Luke, I mean, yeah, then the bloggers can have a field day with that. Well, the problem is that one of the the, the person that works there when when the big when the big guys were in there walking around, they were saying that down the road, um, Baby Yoda is going to be a big part of Disney Star Wars, probably the focal point, and they're going to get that little. Yoda doll everywhere because it's their best seller. They make everybody who goes to Galaxy's Edge wants a picture with it, and and you can't because it doesn't fit the timeline. So they're gonna try to figure out how to fit it in the timeline. Um, and he just they just all were talking about that, and they're like, so there's a section you can see it in Galaxy's Edge. You can see it everywhere. Where it the rumors are, I don't like talking rumors unless I have facts, but that that's where they're gonna build the life looking baby yoda to get photos and interact with people and well we're just talking here we're not doing a news report yeah exactly, yeah so. so it's just like but i mean that's the few if that's true then that's then baby yoda will be i guess luke skywalker to us and baby yoda will be that for disney star wars so i think they're oh they think they're going at that very wrong they got to think of baby yoda like they do groot he's got an expiration date on him you can't you can't push this forever i think I think that uh, James Gunn knew just as far as he could push Baby Groot before it became annoying. I we're talking Disney here, man. I, now, I know what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I completely know. I know, but I think this is going to be overload because I've already gotten to the point where I've started giving away a lot of my Grogu shit because I'm just like I'm over it. You know, between yeah. the, you know, the well, they set stuff up and everything else, I'm just like they yeah. Did, they did set up a section now because it was in such high it's still in such high demand where people can get a photo with baby Yoda at Galaxy's Edge, but he's not there. Basically, you stand up against this wall and the professional photographer takes a photo, and when you get it, he's whatever, photoshopped in your photo. So he's just like, Yeah, all right, you stand here, and it's yeah, anyway. So it's a it's very popular. I mean, it is. It is what it is. I just think they they either need to like lower the price. Now, if we were talking like three hundred, four hundred dollars a night, we probably wouldn't be talking about this because that's standard resort cost in Orlando anyway. So, but yeah, it just sounds like they just. I think I, who are they? They just. I don't know who they have over there. Just that. Just say this is a great idea. Let's go for it. And it's just. I don't know. Well, Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iker. I mean, that's it's like this is their well, the love problem child. is right. So they invented this. So they were they were the ones that impregnated this baby, um, and <laughs> you know what I mean. That's horrible. No, no, but baby. it's true. Sorry. And then it's uh, and then when it when the baby was given birth, Bob Chapek is uh, you know, feeding it generic food. So it's you need to conceive this baby, right? <laughs> Yeah, he has to hold it. So he's holding yeah. this baby now. Yeah, he's I like, think he just missed his phrasing. There. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Sorry, I forgive me. No, yes, thank God. <laughs> it's early in the morning. Dear God. Yeah. No, basically, so. he's the. Uh, here's a better one then. Okay, uh, that uh, this was this was the love child of Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, and yeah, Bob that's, what, that's exactly and then, what I meant. And then they and then they were like in a wait, car. Wait, 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 wait. Does like that mean that. I'm off the and hook? Then, yeah, you're off the hook for this one. Yes. And then and then it goes off to the foster parent, uh, Bob yes. Chapek, who wants nothing to do with this little brat. Maybe their love <laughs> child for him is a brat. Little the bastard, problem, he wants nothing to do with it. The thing with Chapek now when it comes to the parks and all this stuff is that he's cut so much and is charging twice as much that every even the Disney lover, Disney fans, whatever you want to call them, uh, are angry with JPEG because the tickets have doubled in price, the parking is doubled in price, the what you get for a ticket, the value is way down. There's no shows, there's no this, there's no that. 
um it, it's just and so now even with this hotel like he's the one that put the price tag on well, at least that's what they're selling me and it, and then people were arguing like no he's like no we got to make our money we got to make our money so that's just how it has to be it's you're talking about like a like almost a billion dollar investment in this hotel that's so. unbelievable i mean <sighs> Can they can they get Bob Iger back from retirement to get this bonus back or something to like charge a billion dollars spent on this thing? I mean, I hope they get every single one of the world's billionaires to pay that six thousand dollar ticket many times over, because I don't know who else is going to do it. I just I, I just don't know. know. For, I just know for myself that i'm not into larping in the first place so if you had given me a ticket for it i'd just resell it for a massive profit but but even if it was like affordable if i i, I well six thousand dollars unbelievable to me that's what i'm trying to say I'm trying it's a lot of money it's, it's unbelievable six thousand and that's just and so just to make it even worse that's not during that's not the weekend price or over what they call peak months. Oh my god, months, so this is the discount price. That's the discount price, yeah. The peak months is summer, Christmas, and the weekends probably go up probably another thousand, maybe maybe twelve hundred. Well, I look forward to seeing this be uh, every bit as successful as Spider Man <laughs> Turn Off the Dark. Yeah, I I you just sit back and scratch your head and you just wonder. I mean, even the people that are going are just kind of like they they took it was funny. They took me and Ryan Kennel's uh video where we were talking about the cancellations and this, this live they did this live stream. Some of these theme park uh, I remember somebody sent it to me. And then now they privatize it cuz I was going to clip out some parts, but oh well. And they just ripped us to shreds saying, no, it's going to be fully booked. You don't know what you're talking about. These people are idiots, this and that, this and that. And it's like, now they have nothing to say because it's just true. It's just, it's like, what are you guys thinking over there? Like, why would you build something? Yeah, look at every. <laughs> I could go to North Korea and get arrested for real. That's me. It's crazy. Actually, I, I'd, I'd pay $6,000 for that, for the North Korea experience. Yeah, I, I mean, if you go online, it's so they're just to be clear. You go online, they're advertising it for forty eight ninety for two people for two nights. That does not include tax. That does not include the extra stuff you have to pay. That does not include um, even if you want to do a few other little extra things. It doesn't include any of that. So after all that stuff, it it gets it totals out to be. I think they were saying like fifty eight ninety. So, and that's on the discounted rate. Yeah, we can almost buy our own shit for that. It's crazy. Like, and then what I'm afraid is, like, that first week, those vloggers are going to come out. And they're going to be like, "This is the greatest thing ever," because well, of course they are. But, they're paid but for. Other it. people are not. So here's the thing: is you're not allowed to record or take photos while you're inside. They have professionals that will do that for you. Uh, so it's like I think you're signing something unless they change it. It's kind of the same way as like if you go to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights, there's no photos or videos inside the haunted houses. But if you're on the select list of people, um, you can photo and video inside. I mean, they, these people, Disney handpicks people that know they're going to say nothing but wonderful things uh, for them to come in and take photos and things like that. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, just to comment on what Rogue just is saying here, six thousand will get you a great Princess Leia in a slave outfit with a happy ending. <laughs> and at, God, Rogue at, Disney. At, 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 at that price point, like Disney, almost better include that. But um, yeah, <laughs> well, that's why Tom was going to go. He was going to give us that. Yeah. <clears throat> right, actually, I oh, we'll see. Out. I don't know. It's uh, it's just kind of. It's kind of, it, it's at this point, it's just comical, you know. It is, it is a joke. It's a complete. It is. Joke. It's just comical. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. Like, like I can't even for words. I have no words for this insanity. Like, I'm not a park goer, and yeah, I know that. Uh, that uh, I don't want to get political to do anything, but you have like the most incompetent person 
running the country and inflation is going amok and six thousand today isn't what six thousand dollars were like half six months ago but but my god still what a price even with inflation the only way that i would just like i could possibly justify it is if i was the first one to go and they would let me video the whole thing because that first video will probably get a million views because everyone will want to know what it's like inside. And that would probably pay for it. That'd be it. <laughs> but if they're not even going to let you like record, <laughs> you, you know, YouTube it's like better it, put up that video themselves and monetize it. I mean, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. they I mean, they put out a video and it got deleted because the backlash was so severe. They never. And that's the thing. Disney never deletes anything. Once they like upload it, it's like there. And the fact that they deleted that commercial is kind of that's crazy. Exactly, Das Wolf. And that's what I said. If Andre gave me six grand to go on a trip, that Disney thing would be the last place I'd go to. <laughs> I'd go to like Vegas and shit. Fuck that. I'd I'd you'd have more likelihood of me putting up six thousand dollars for a trip to Vegas. In fact, then six thousand might not be enough than a could ticket you... for the disney park so you could go role playing for a for a night at the hotel no thank you and i'd be honest i would love to see tom in vegas with six grand for a month i'm curious i'm to sorry see how that would i'm play not out. a larper the only role playing i want to do is with like a hooker or some shit like you know <laughs> Yeah, as I was saying, at that price, I mean, Disney Fuck. better know what people get the opportunity cost for six thousand. You can shoot a porno for that price, man. Hey, what? Boy, Tom's really going in that hole, man. He's, he's well, right. right. I'm just like, he... if I'm thinking, if I'm spending six grand, I better be getting more than just a fucking lightsaber and fucking. Yeah. You, know, you don't even get a light. Saber. Okay, note to self: Do not write Tom a blank check for six thousand dollars. <laughs> Give a whole new meaning to Midnight's Edge after dark. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. You gave me six grand. I'm going to do something with it that's insane. Yes. <laughs> None Chuck a source might become second a real note thing. Yourself. I do the paying here. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like, like you never know what could happen. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. oh Lord, I'd probably just put it away. But yeah. Uh, no, or as uh, Alex says, Tom would probably travel to Madison, Wisconsin, for hundred bucks and spend the rest on four K Blu-rays. Um, I don't think there's enough four K Blu-rays to spend six grand on. To be honest with you, I probably have most of them already. <laughs> anyway. Exactly. So yeah, you can use the remaining pocket change after a night out in Vegas on on the four Ks. I guess. I mean, Christ, just to, I mean, I could probably. Just I'd only I could spend maybe four grand and build myself a hell of a home theater system. It's like, well, yeah. what's what's crazy is an article came out a, over a year ago in Reader's Digest from an insider apparently that said that um, Disney, as far as the theme parks concerned, are going to try to phase out numbers in the park. So they're gonna they're gonna triple the price, and they even mentioned. The astronomical price for this hotel, they're like, it's going to be beyond only 1% can afford it. That's exactly. triple... Get rid of the pleb. I mean, because they can use that AKA as a selling point to the world's yeah. billionaires. Now you can go to Disneyland, just like Cartman. The whole park is just for you and your fellow good friends. And all the pleb can't come. Yeah. And so I did a video on that over a year ago, and I got so much. This guy that runs a podcast from another guy, whatever, I'm not going to say his name, but he he went after me big time saying I'm a liar. That's never going to happen. I'm like still waiting for his apology. And it's like you see that now. It's like Disney's being sued right now from an annual pass holder for five million dollars. I don't think this person's going to win. But the it's fact the, that it's actually gaining pass- stuff. Well, it's gaining I'm media attention. Well, what happens is you buy an annual pass. You sh- you're supposed to be able to go whenever you want and so she bought the top tier which which means it has no blackout dates which is which is saying you can go any day of the year as long as the park is open Mm -hmm. and so she was like well what disney has done now is they implemented this reservation system where if you want to go you got to go on the website you got to show that you have an annual pass and pick a date 
and maybe they'll let you go. And so what Disney's doing is they're limiting the amount of people that go into the park because they believe that if the rich go and they have a better experience, they'll spend more money in the park. And that way they'll generate more money overall for Disney. And so she was trying to get passes to go. She's like, I paid all this money for this thing and I can't even go to the park. Forget it. I'm done. I'm suing you. And, and this is she, worth five million dollars. Well, I mean, I, that's what she's suing for. But it's it's uh, whether, like I said, I don't know if she'll win. But well, I'll, I'll, if she I'll wins something, doing, but, believe yeah. me, there'll be a lot more because a lot of people are, at least on that realm of the world, uh, are so aggravated um, with that whole system because it's it's catering to the wealthy. I mean, it's just how it is. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah, well, if, if she wins, we have to find something to sue Disney for as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm sure we can come up with some distress and all that business. Uh, Me- <laughs> Mega J says, even Illumination Sing 2 movie did better than The Matrix 4. Oh, yeah, we yeah. covered that earlier on. Uh, did you get a chance to see The Matrix 4, Jay? That was... Wait, what? Is that... Was it really a movie? <laughs> I guess. Did anybody here like it? I was confused uh, from start to finish, and I just went, what in the world? I know a few people who liked it. Um, I've never really I know started. more people who didn't. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, and then there's this middle ground where, like, it's kind of like, yeah, it's just a movie. And it, it, it it's kind of a movie. I don't know. Kind of. Well, I mean, it was- it's like The Matrix itself. I mean, it looks like it's real, but it's not. And the Matrix movie is looks like it's a movie, but it's kind of not. So that's that's the best analogy I can do at this point. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I did watch it in sections because I fell asleep. I was going to say this movie is basically that scene with the Joey Pants in the first movie, where he's talking to to um, what's his face Anderson. Or, uh, All right, Smith? did you guys talk Smith. spoilers? Oh, uh, vagueishly. Yeah, All right, we, we I, have I won't already. say anything. Honestly, I don't think anybody cares. I just thought, like, the first 10 minutes, I'm going, wow, they really are going to do that to us? That the, the, the first three movies were just a video game that somebody was playing? Well, that's, I, that's I that. think... I was like, wow, what a way to... <laughs> no, they actually did happen, but, like, they they convinced Neo's character that they were just... Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the cover story, so that he won't question too much. Like, yeah, if you just put him back with something else, and he starts dreaming of the Matrix, whereas if you make him uh, a creator, a one who has made successful video games in the past, and who now has to live off his glory days and try to repeat them, that's something, you know, a better way to bring, for the brainwashing to stick, I guess. That's yeah, kind of the weird. point, yeah. Uh, Akuna in 1876, uh, is that Belgian, Andre? Uh, no, it's Bulgarian. Oh, Bulgarian, that's right, yes. Wow. yes. Uh, uh, so thank you for listening in Bulgaria. It says, modern Hollywood made me switch to watching old and or European when a French art house drug-filled film from the 1970s is better than blockbusters. You're not Do wrong. Do not underestimate the French art house films. Yeah, and we got a new member with Fort Thirteen Garage. Welcome oh, to the welcome. Channel. Awesome, right. awesome. Then we got Eclipse Warlord here, who says, "I hope for Jupiter Ascending." I had hope, sorry, uh, but when I saw the movie, great visuals, nothing else. Yeah, yes, much. me too. I also had hope for Jupiter Ascending. Then I saw the movie with Channing Tatum as a dog or something like that. I, you actually I, had hope for it. I pity that. Yeah, I did. I thought it looked cool. I, I as soon as I knew the Wachowskis were involved, I lost any hope. Well, I was like thinking that I mean, th- there must be they must be due for a good one, right? Right? Wrong. <laughs> they're they're essentially a one hit wonder. I mean, yeah, they are. Yeah, everything else they've done has been adaptations. That's actually done anything. So, and they didn't make V for Vendetta. They just produced it. Someone else wrote. And That's true. That is true. Uh, Rod Thunderheart says Matrix Resurrections. I might try to suffer through it. Uh, well, it's up to you. I already kind of broke it down pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty pretty much just a guy who's got to get ready for a date, but he can't get it up no more, so he keeps popping blue pills. That's pretty much it. A date with a married woman with kids. <laughs> with, yeah, with a married woman with kids. Yeah, no less. An old flame that he never met. That's so weird. That movie is just weird. 
<laughs> it feels more like a, one of those like romantic dramedies than it does a Matrix movie. It's almost like it just goes out of its way to be a Matrix movie. That was that was why I felt like after a while, just like this is dumb. Fifty two movies a year says <laughs> Matrix regurgitation is worse than Eight Bit Christmas. Yeah, I want to see Eight Bit Christmas. I didn't get a chance to watch it over the holiday. People have been talking a lot about it. I uh, I like that film. It was I kind of it was a, good. It was like a Christmas story, but with Nintendo. I'll have to check it out. I've heard good things from a lot of people. Yeah, another that's, else, so. I thought it was good. Wait, is, is that the one where like the dad's in the office and he's telling his daughter about yeah. the story? Oh, I read that script a couple of years ago. That was a good script. Oh, cool, cool. It was neat. It was like, if you like the Christmas story with the Red Rider, then you probably will get a kick out of this. It's pretty, pretty much a play on. Yeah. Darius Moonchausen sent us a super sticker. I don't know if I can see what it is anymore, but let me take a look. Um... The, yeah. uh, the audience can see. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I can't go back any farther. Here. Yeah. Uh, popcorn. Well, thank, popcorn. All right. I was going to assume it was popcorn anyway. See? <laughs> thank you for that, Darius. Uh, and then moving along here. Next one, you can say the name already. Then I have the rest. Rod Thunderheart. Says for five Canadian dollars, eh? I'm definitely still. Staying home and just curling up on the couch. It's 38 degrees uh, <laughs> where I am in Edmonton, wow. Alberta, Canada. Fucking brrr. I don't know yeah, what's uh, cold over there. Or minus 38. <laughs> it's minus 10 here in Norway. I had uh, minus two where I am. Here. Well, we got a yeah. snowstorm yesterday. So. And, yeah, uh, we're actually getting the start of that right now. <laughs> and the brightest uh, day <laughs> said, uh, says, Jay, you handsome <laughs> bastard. Oh, brightest day. Yeah. Hey, he had the best looking. Uh, well, I'm not, maybe I shouldn't say, but when I met him in Boston, he's the one who had the pretty lady around his arm. Oh. <laughs> and then he adds, uh, So you're saying there's no laser tag? <laughs> well, they not might for change you. There it. is for whoever is playing Ray by the sounds of it. And... I, all I'm saying is Disney is, they have been in here in Florida. They have been so strict on mandates and wearing masks. It's like anytime you go inside anything, you have to put a mask on. And I'm like, how are they going to do this hotel? It's just going to be it's, if, if it's still going on by March, it's going to be weird. And then well, Billy yeah. Russo is uh, happy to see you here, Jay. He says, Hello, awesome. Billy. You're here. I'm glad you're here, too. Thank you for being here, Billy. Uh, Revcor says this idea was doomed from the start. Then Chipek arrived yeah. and likely cut funding too expensive for too little. I agree. Yeah. Exactly what happened. Just none of it sounds appealing. Like even Galaxy's Edge to begin with didn't even sound that all appealing to me. But and I've never really been to any like parks before. I've never been to a it's... big. I have, and what I don't get is. Is why not just just look at what they did uh, did at Universal Studios? Like for instance, the Transformers ride, just a ride, and it's awesome. I mean, something like yeah. that for Star Wars would have been great. Same with the Back to the Future ride. Before those, you can tell it's been a long time since I was at Universal Studios. Before that time, and if anything, uh, like the the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I mean, they were obviously trying for something like that. And they failed miserably, uh, and that's like what I what I don't get. I mean, just look to Universal and the Transformers, right? I mean, if you want to do yeah. a Star Wars experience, to me at least, just look, as someone very casual, that's something that I would have been interested in, like a simulator ride like that in a Star Wars themed. I'd be much more interested in that than than trying to LARP the Star Wars experience. It's going to fail anyway. They, I'm, they are really pushing for a certain audience, and it's not uh, us. Clearly, the one percent. Yeah. Well, not only that, the progressive one percent. Right. If that's what you want to call. Progressive, but but, but. Uh, but are the progressive one percent into Star Wars in the first place? They are on Twitter, but that's probably it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, can you even make them fork over the the cash necessary? Do they, have, we'll... do they have the cash? I but can we'll you can out. you can you convince them to take the trip to LARP something that they tweet about? I it's I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I, I I don't see how you can maintain that hotel 
uh, year in and year out at that price. Uh, they did th- the the reason why it is what they were trying to explain to me why it is expensive, but it shouldn't be that expensive is the actors involved. Ah, uh, hiring all the paying the actors. Well, and Daisy the Ridley people, ain't doing much, so and the you know the crew, the staff, all that stuff. Star Wars it's ruined her career, so she should heavy. be able to get get some jobs there. I would think. Uh, I would think that would be like a step down, though, too. Yeah, but she can just pretend that she's not really Daisy Ridley. And then everybody can be like, you look so much like her. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> so much like her. Yeah. It's a pseudonym. Yeah, sorry. I'm building like a, a They're going to bring out in my head. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, like come March when this thing opens, they're going to bring out the whole crew. Just like they did when they opened Galaxy's Edge and had Mark Hamill and all of them. They're going to they're going to do a whole thing over there. I remember when Mark Hamill used to not be a sellout. Oh, those were the days. Uh, how many rooms is it? I think it's a uh, uh, hundred rooms, or maybe it's like eighty rooms, something like that. So six K times a hundred, sixty grand. Some of the they do have like four like uh, really nice suites, you know, like or really nice like presidential suites that oh, are so even more expensive ones crazy expensive yeah like 12 grand so jesus christ well they're hoping i guess to try and make like a million a day on the on the actual part uh cruise ship right so that their goal roughly jesus. pilgrim media brings up the matrix again says gentlemen i believe the matrix movie was purely to try and change the red pill blue pill meme your thoughts well i know well, that there was some comments on that but I don't know. It's kind of weird because they still don't really break the narrative of the blue pill. Basically, uh, it's or still the red pill, rather. Like the the, the meme. Neither the or. Like pill. they basically make the blue pill even worse. Like they just, you know, uh, reinforce the whole idea of what the blue pill stands for. And as far as the red pill, eh, not really. At least I didn't see that. Now, now about the memes and stuff, yeah, there's a lot of people have been talking about it. But I do know they talked about it in the press, so I guess that's on them. So if that was what they were trying to do, they failed is my point. I don't know. What do you think, Jay? I just I I'm telling you the truth. I started it. I watched it on HBO Max. You I was confused. It? And then like you get to that point where you're like, I'm on my phone. Uh <laughs> folding clothes it's just like i just you just kind of check out like it was that bad like i don't what were they thinking well, script fell asleep so that's what i'm saying what were they thinking when they made this i don't understand like is it like oh we're gonna throw them for a loop it's gonna be awesome like it's we're gonna like what what went into this it's just why did they not have people around them that go you know I think this sucks. Like, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe oh, those they're not allowed to do that anymore. Days. Yeah, I was just going to say, go ahead, script. Yeah, those people lose their jobs these days. You have to have a you have to have a relationship or and a trusting one with someone who's like, listen, you have to tell me if I'm being stupid or not. And if you do, are oh, you have to be more than that just sucks. You have to be like, this is why it sucks because it's an argument, it's a debate. Because you're arguing with the creative, you have to explore and, and understand where they're coming from and also understand why that concept or why that approach might not be best suited for the, for the concept you want to pitch. And, and the goal, I mean, just like with um, Gary Kurtz and uh, Luke, George Lucas, like Gary Kurtz knew where Lucas is coming from, but Lucas couldn't articulate what he wanted to go. And Gary there was like, listen, uh, I know this is your, your goal here, but where you're coming from, isn't going to reach that. So let's fix it, fix it and get it going. Yeah, he needed that team. And the, yeah, if you have a good team like that, you'll make something, you know, ideally, you make and everybody great. else too. Yeah. And if you don't have that team, if you have a bunch of yes men, you get the prequel trilogy. And then subsequently, you also get the sequel trilogy. Which yeah. Is a good leader, a, bunch of yes a good leader won't let the praise of his ass kissers go to his head. And he'll always listen to the, to the, to the critics as well. Right. Well, you listen to the people that care about you and an ass right. kisser doesn't care about you. <laughs> right. And, and that's the thing is you got to kind of take into consideration that, you know, those who care about you are going to tell you that this is going to suck. I love the prequels. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'll check, that's fine. Check, your, check your DM. You got to get running. I don't know if you talked about this. Oh, we were actually, that's kind of a segue into our next story, oh. to be honest with you. Uh, that's the last story of today. Uh, 
before we do that, though, I'm going to grab this super chat here where Jim Watari asks, have we seen uh, Don't Look Up yet on Netflix? Saw the trailer, was looking forward to it, and then a bunch of people told me it's nothing but Wokey Woke. So I don't it's, know. Have anybody seen it? Yeah, yep. I got a little aggravated with Leo's character after a while because he he just he's just in a panic attack for like the whole time. Yeah, so, I mean, the trailer made it look like it was kind of funny. It, and then, it's a great, it's an interesting, it's actually, I, honestly, it's, it, it does have a great, uh, it's a great outline for, could be a great story. And if you don't know what we're talking about, basically, yeah, and this is in the trailer, so I'm not spoiling it. Basically, yeah. uh, a scientist discovers that a, a meteor is going to hit the earth and it's going to be catastrophic. Oh, and, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so he goes and and to meet the president and everybody, and they were just like, uh, is this gonna so, mess up our weekend plans? Is this gonna like like no one no one cared? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a critique of the Trump administration. Which because, is weird. But honestly, you know, because, if because you... you you have medals to reap and uh they, so she's a woman, but apparently she's a stand in for Trump and like her son. It's like it looks more like Trump Jr. and that's uh, and that's deliberate. So the whole thing is kind of like, what if this were to happen with an incompetent administration like the Trump administration? And that's kind of like the whole thing. So I think it reminds so, me of libs of TikTok because everyone like they care more about someone breaking up than they care about a meteor destroying. Like they care more about the most stupidest thing. Well, that's what I got from the trailer was like basically that. Yeah, I, I kind of got the whole thing from the, the the government not giving a shit, but the media came off like the movie looked like it was poking fun more at the media not caring about this stuff and like instead of the media like buying into it and all, it was more about like they were acting all woke and stuff. But then somebody told me the movie itself is more woke, so I was like, oh great. And then like now I'm hearing about the whole Trump business too in it and stuff, which I kind of saw in the trailer too. But I was kind of looking forward to it, unfortunately. Now yeah, see, like, yeah, people in the chat are saying it's uh it's about anti-vax and conservative i, I possibly yeah that's, like that's that what i got like, from it in advance because i haven't yeah. seen the movie myself but the <clears throat> but the commentary that i read about it appears to be that it's uh, like so many of the original netflix productions it is one that's very much so part of the narrative uh, meaning that it buys into the orange man bad and uh, and everyone who is not completely blue pilled are also very very bad and uh, those that are not uh, boosted and uh, ready for the for the next one with the cards and everything are also very bad that appears to be from what I've read and can glean from it, the message of the movie. I haven't seen it myself. Yeah. Well, and that kind of goes into what Duke Dresden saying here, along with uh, uh, an Australian $10, uh, says, remember the game Lemmings? Woke Hollywood personified with the with we as the fans trying to stop them jumping off the cliff. Well, I've gotten to the point where I've just stopped trying to let them <laughs> just let them go. Yeah. And I use that Lemmings meme over and over. <laughs> yeah, I remember the, the, the cover for that. I was always confused. Yeah. Like, how are those Lemmings? Because the Norwegian lemmings, at the very least, look different. Yeah. Well, and as Jay was pointing out, like, there's this whole uh, business going on with the Ghostbusters box set, um, as we reported on last week. Um, now we actually have uh, the uh, official idea of what's going to be in the box set. And, of course, it appears that Paul Feig himself had, a, had you know, won out a little bit with his little whiny business. And uh, they're going to include his movie digitally with this box set. I think it's funny, though. Like, they're like, oh, my gosh, he's making such a stink. Let's just print out some little cards and stick it in here. <laughs> so like, if they really want to see the film, it's a digital download. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's actually the, the least they could do next to nothing. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I yeah, agree. That's, that's why I'm, I think it's funny. Look. And also, it's easier to organize because um, if they were to include the actual disc, they would have to organize uh, with like uh, cut in. They'd have to reprint it, yeah. On like uh, on the disc sales and everything. Whereas right now, if they just link to this is where you'll find the the disc digitally, the same place you'd find it elsewhere. You can just go off the standard digital deal. So it's at least the like it's the easiest thing they can do to appease him. 
and not uh, destroy the box set and uh, not do anything much more in terms of writing and stuff like that. Just like it's also this very is where you'll find the, the claimings of the digital downloads is like they'll they'll be able to track it specifically. <laughs> how many people bought the box set and how many people claimed the digital download and they'll be able to uh, reconcile those numbers and, and show Paul Feig, hey, uh, not, uh, lots of people bought the uh, the box set and we got this many small percentage of that that claimed the digital download. I doubt that many people who are going to buy this set will be interested in Well, my game. understanding of how yeah, residuals and shit work, for him to get any kind of residuals off this basically they'd have to factor in the cost into the original box set otherwise you're right because all it is now is basically a coupon it's a write-off yep yeah pretty much i think it's funny so do i i i, I think I, there's like some like you know college intern all right hey hey billy I'm going to print some of these things out. Just stick them in the box. All right. God, this guy just won't yeah. leave us alone. Because, like, actually, if they were making an effort, that means they would have to redesign the box. Put I the, agree. Put the movie in there. All that business. Like, that's what you're getting at. Yeah. And they're not doing any of that. No. No. No, Some... this is hilarious. But I did I, I did have to stir the pot a little bit. I, I, I tweeted at Sony. I'm like, now since you know all you have to do is whine to get your way i'm just going to ask nicely is there any chance we could at least get a digital download of the 3d version because uh Ooh. yeah of ghostbusters afterlife they made it almost impossible to fucking see in 3d uh, there was a 3d version i know most people don't give a shit and that's probably why but like hey i'm like well if you're not gonna well, put it on disc at least put it in the digital copy since you're gonna give him the digital copy of his movie no, nobody else is gonna download it but him That's funny. The new Batman trailer dropped. It did. I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah Paulie sent that to us. Uh, we'd probably show it, but we'd probably get brought down by. No, Batman. we're not going to show it because uh, again, we'll be a copyright struck for it. But I actually did see it, and uh, and I saw it like here in the background when I disappeared while while, while you were talking. And uh, my oh, opinion did. on the on the movie has not changed one iota. No, the, all the more I see of it, then I still say. I remain unconvinced. No, they did a good composite with the body double for uh, um, Robert Pattinson in that shirtless scene. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but um, yeah, no, I, I remain yeah. unconvinced, and uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's of course it's Pattinson too, but he's not the big issue to me. It's the director. I have very little faith in this director. I was never a fan of him being appointed to this movie. I never felt that he was a good fit with the material. It could have turned up being the best Batman movie ever, in which case I'm very happy to admit that. But still, I've seen nothing to convince me of that. I'm not excited for this. And now we also know that it's going to have like a 45... Uh, 45 day release window so it'll be like exclusive theatrical for 45 days and then go straight to HBO Max and uh, if it's if it's uh, fantastic awesome but uh, I I remain unconvinced I Jay how about you oh. or is, uh, did you see it the, the trailer yet are you excited for the movie I did not see the trailer um I'm not much I'm I'm more a Marvel person than I am a DC. I probably is it coming out on HBO Max? Uh, not forty five days after. Yeah, forty five days after. Which I oh, think okay. is going to become right. a standard. To be honest with you, Andrew, that's what I was going to say. Is I think that Warner, we're going to find out soon that Warner will decide to do that for just about everything you watch. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll I probably will just have patience and wait unless people come out and and just say, uh. This is unbelievable. Go see it. And then I'll go see. It. I usually like movies like that. I usually wait for uh, you guys' review, other people, and like hear what they have to say before I s spend money to go. And I can just be patient, watch it at home with a pizza and some beer, maybe some fried chicken. So Something it's hard to sneak well. fried chicken in a the movie theater now. Yeah, it, is. it really is. It like, burns your leg. And yeah. Oh, you got to wrap it in tinfoil just right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, but you might Fine. get a date after that. Well, might. then it should be happy. It's fried chicken and not something else. I mean. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So we have another uh, 
Super chat here. The red lines or red lens. I'm so sorry. Says at this point, isn't John Wick basically Neo without the powers? Uh, it's infinitely more interesting than any of the sequels we've gotten out of the Matrix. That's for sure. Um, pretty much though. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add to that. Mm. Then we got your fellow countryman here, Andre. Yeah, and he says, uh, Paradise Plane says for 200 Norwegian krona, a billion for a new Star Wars hotel. And that's dollars. Elon Musk builds high tech factories for a billion and earns the money and earns the money back by building high tech cars and rockets. Uh, yeah, I would say that his business model is better, but uh, but we'll see. I mean, Evidently, Elon Musk himself is the target audience for this one billion dollar hotel. So we'll see what comes of it. Um, yeah. And then Cyber Soldier says it's pretty bad. When my kid saw the Matrix Four trailer, he thought it was John Wick's sequel. <laughs> speaking to, yeah. Uh, Action Com says, "What did you think of the Wachowski Mafia movie Bound? Never saw it. What about you no, guys?" That's a Jennifer Tilly. Um, yeah, I know that part of it, but that's it. One. That's it. Yeah. I I saw it uh, back in the 90s when it was new. I don't remember the movie. I just remember that at the time I didn't think much of it. But if I yeah. were to rewatch it now, then I still probably wouldn't think much of it, I guess. Yeah. Hypergyver 2 says at least Cobra Kai season four drops in a couple of days. Yes, it does. Yeah. Friday, if I remember right. Oh man, Star Wars Theory, they gave him an early showing. Oh, and I got to talk to him about it, and he he said, and he made a video on it too. So it wasn't like no, there's no spoilers, but he was like, "Best season yet, you're gonna love it." So, Cobra Kai. Yeah, I was like, "You oh, jerk." Awesome. He goes, "We'll make a Cobra Kai <laughs> channel. Maybe you'll get it early." I was like, uh. "Well, we were talking about it too. We don't get no invitation." I know. <laughs> it's actually for a while one of my co one of our Cobra Kai videos was like the biggest Midnight Edge After Dark video for a while there. Um, but anyway, Sean Carter sends in five and says there are 2,755 billionaires in the world. If all of them went to this stupid hotel, it would only get at Disney 16 million. Oh. Well, maybe they're aiming for the millionaires as well. Yeah. It's, people it's are a, going to debt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, B. Jordan says, hail panel in chat. Matrix 4 is boring crap. Only <laughs> smiled when I first saw Neo and Trinity for nostalgia only. Fell asleep at some point, but realized I didn't miss anything. First Matrix is all I need. Yeah, pretty much. And that's the thing. And that was kind of the whole thing I was getting to is there's nostalgia done right. And then there's nostalgia done wrong. And Matrix, even though it's not woke exactly necessarily, it's still nostalgia done wrong, in my opinion. Uh, as opposed to Spider-Man, which uh, does nostalgia right, and it's uh, reaping the benefits because of it. Uh, I don't know if anybody has anything to add to that, but yeah. I don't think there's much more to say. Uh, Cinema Journal says, will we see Midnight's Edge cover any big horror of 2022? Halloween, uh, Evil Dead, Texas Chainsaw, Scream. Oh, I'm sure we'll get Hellraiser. it. Hellraiser. Hellraiser's coming. Um, yep. But yeah, Halloween and Scream in Texas are probably more my domains. Um, yeah, so we'll definitely cover uh, color, cover Halloween. We did that already. Yeah, uh, I personally, I'm gonna go into to Hellraiser and um, Evil Dead. It'll be an interesting one, maybe. There's another Evil Dead coming. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what it's all about. I don't think it's a direct sequel to the last one, but it's still in the franchise ish same, kind of thing. Same star? No, I don't think it is. I think it's really. Somebody completely like yeah, it's Bruce Campbell has retired from Ashley Williams now. No, but that's like the catch I heard. And this is just what I heard in less script or anybody else knows anything different in the chat. Um, like this one is supposed to be about all descendants of people from the original film. So like people who are related to people that were in the original cabin. Oh, oh who cares? Exactly. Like, I don't know. So they're probably trying to do like a, a for, you know, force awakens slash type movie whatever you want to call it of it i don't think that campbell will be involved at all though um he is a producer but he is retired ash so um as far as texas chainsaw i think that's a straight to netflix thing so i don't think we'll pay much attention to that no um if i watch it i'm sure i'll talk about it as far as scream that's an interesting one i know andre hates scream i can't stand them i have a love-hate relationship with the franchise so we'll see um, it all depends. That one's a possibility. If I can come up with an idea for a video, you never know. Um, but we'll see on that. 
Uh, Warwolf says Feig or Feig wind his way into a card. Ha, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what happened. You're not wrong. And then, uh we have uh, Kung Fu Hot Dog. All right, before you read that, I have oh, something sure, you to get... say yeah, about go ahead. Kung Fu Hot Dog. <laughs> I've done nothing but talk you up, Kung Fu Hot Dog. <laughs> I taught you used one of my videos in your videos. I love your channel. You never show up to my live streams, but everybody else's, everybody else's. I see a super chat and everything, never shows up. All right, I'm done. Great right. channel, by the way. I love Evidently, y'all got some beef. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, he's, he's a hot dog, so. His, he's hilarious, he's a man. His channel dog. is he's freaking a hilarious. Uh, all greeting... love, buddy. All love. Sorry. Go ahead, Tom. No, no. That's fine. It says, greetings, gents. Let's hope Spider-Man No Way Home success sends the message to Hollywood. Hope John Watts F4 doesn't get ruined by Disney's agenda. Well, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, they learn some lessons. We just always say, unfortunately, they learn the wrong lessons. Uh, Mecca J says, I doubt millionaires would even want to stay at a hotel like in a hotel like this, I think he means. It's probably going to be just one big waste of money. Well, it sure sounds like it. It'd be it cheaper does. for them to build their own Star Wars like room. No shit, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like their own Star Wars room with their own Leia and everything. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. Is like for four grand, I could build a hell of a fucking home theater. You get an Airbnb room going, man. And all this stuff. Look, look, hey, actually, let's go this way. For, for six grand, you could get one hell of a VR setup. That could give you a much better experience than this probably could. Yeah. I agree. And I believe we're caught up, Andre, unless we missed any from the start or anything like that. Nope, we should be caught up. And if anyone feels otherwise, and, let uh, us know in the chat right yeah, now. None of the Orenches have sent me any uh, memberships today, so I think we're good. All right, excellent. Well, with that, uh, I would like to say thank you to Drunk 3PO yeah. uh, for show, showing in. It's Always awesome when you have yeah. the opportunity to hop in. No, thank you for the invites. It's it's an honor. It's always an honor. Well, you know we love you. Um, yeah, we did oh, get one absolutely. more super chat here. It looks like one of two. Or oh, are you stuck? No, no uh, actually, no. It's just one. House of Trade. He says for five Canadian dollars. I wasn't a big fan of the new Spider-Man movie. Three movies in, and Peter is still making the same mistakes. The first half I found boring. Well, well there's a few small. people who didn't like it, but uh, I can understand that. Yeah, for the most part, uh, overall, it's gotten a general positive uh, review for most people. So it's understandable, though. Sometimes I like movies that a lot of people don't like, and vice versa. It's the way it goes. But unfortunately, in this world, if you have a differing opinion from some people. They will no longer talk to you or they'll throw shit at you or they'll call you an istophobe. So um, with that, though, uh, Paulus Plain sends in another one. I was wrong. <laughs> it says, Americans, butter in your popcorn. In your popcorn, dudes. American butter. Dudes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, what it means, what the hell is wrong with you? It's supposed no, to be salt. It's, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> y'all want some dry ass shit? And be like, <sighs> yeah, I mean, popcorn is supposed to be dry. I remember like. Uh, yeah, it's it's dry and salty. I remember, like, when I saw it in America, I was like, "What the hell is this wet goo?" You just don't know what popcorn is all about. Oh yeah, one of the fun little cultural differences, I guess. But anyway, this just will not have... end this debate, I tell you. But with that, I want to thank Jay again for hopping in here, man. It's oh been no, too no, long. thank you, you guys. I, I, uh, all right. This is just my opinion and not the opinion of the panel. But I, I usually like to have a podcast or something on during this time while I'm working on other things. And like Campia used to be the only option. And so I'm really glad you guys take this time slot. So I love it. I, I usually listen you know, all the time. I usually have it on. I'm not, not gonna trash gonna, anyone, but it's just. I'm not going to name big... names, but there's been a few people who have said the same thing as you. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, John did it to himself. I'm not. We're not trying to compete with anybody, really. We're just here to do our thing. If people want to check in, that's awesome. But uh, you know, uh, it is what it is, and we appreciate that, Jay. We yeah. appreciate you being here, and we love all you do. And uh, uh, hopefully, you have much more success in the new year. Appreciate it. Same with you. Same with everybody here. Thank yeah. you so much. And of course, uh, so, thanks yeah, as well, always uh, to Script as well. Of course, yeah, thanks to Script. Everyone check out his channel, check out Drunk3PO and his late, latest date with uh, with uh, Miss Gina Carano. Yeah. The link <laughs> for both will be in the description before long here. And uh, yeah, and also, 
check back later today. I don't know that there's going to be a toxic femininity today. Probably I think we're taking won't. the night off. If I'm probably not probably we are, but we have a huge He-Man video coming for you later yes. today. We may also have uh, have uh, another an bonus editorial video. on Scotty Mendelson being Scotty Mendelson some more <laughs> and trying to protect the narrative at all costs. Uh. Taking the wrong lessons from the Spider-Man box of success. So yes. just check back in because we need your help with the algorithm and everything. So Thank don't you. go too far. And this is one thing I cannot argue with at all. Jay is a classy. Oh, uh, I have my Indeed. moments. Oh yeah, Thank he has you. his moments. So, but that's the best part is when you do sink to those moments, they're that much funnier because of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, D Bud. Uh, I think a couple of the ladies had things going on, so we just decided you you're know all what? in my house. Sorry, yeah, you they're the all well. I didn't want to, you know, but hey, you be you good know. to Lorena, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, hey, that's one person I would never cross, right? right. Listen, I, sur- I don't know why I surround myself with girls that could beat me up, like, I don't like, I need to work on that. Well, it's not oh. even so much beat you up. She could just like she just like she's just has that authority about her. Yeah, so does Gina. She could uh, yes. they could beat me up. Trust me. They, they well, just... Gina, I could. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I've seen enough evidence that I can believe that. So with that, <laughs> I think Hypergyver is right, and he's telling us it's time to go. Thank you so much, everybody. He says moist marsupials, which means it's time for. <laughs> koalas in the rain i want to thank comics division for setting me up with this for so long i know we we've kind of adopted it from him and i'm sure it sucks for him but you know what? it's just it's a thing but I, but uh, speaking of comics check out my latest video on midnight's edge after dark there's a plug for him in there you can you can see uh, me on his channel from the other night uh, breaking down the matrix but anyway koalas in the rain koalas in the rain Give them Kuwata, Kuwata, Kuwata's in the rain.